All right, hello everyone, and welcome to Culture of Gaming's Power Up Podcast, episode 69, being recorded live on April 27th, 2019. I'm your host, Taylor, and this week I'm, of course, joined by Anthony Dennis. How are you? Pretty decent. How are you? Good. Yeah, it's yeah. good. What you been playing? What you been doing? Nice. Uh, haven't really been doing much, I must say. I've been kind of playing a bit of GTA 5, managed to pick that up. Um, and kind of been modding that unsuccessfully. Uh, I installed like a, I think it's like a police kind of mod thing. Uh, and it's kind of like a base mod, but then you add on packs too, kind of thing. Um, and you gotta have certain things installed. And every time I uh, kind of install them or add them on to the base pack, it fails to launch and has many issues and all that fun stuff. Uh, so that's absolutely awesome. Uh, aside from that, I haven't really been playing much else this week. Been kind of busy, had a bit of a nightmare cat had to go to the vet. Oh. Um, got in a cat yeah. fight and got some couple of issues, but aside from that, um, nothing much else this week. Alright. Gonna, gonna get into that GTA 5 role playing? No. Oh, man. <laughs> I, one of like, the streamers that I've followed for years, better from the StarCraft days, is, is yeah. like super into the GTA 5 roleplay now. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's like, like a big Twitch thing all of a sudden. It's like mm. Pixel Dead or Dead Pixel or something like that. I don't know what it's mm. called. It's like second on Twitch at the moment. Like GTA in general is like second or third on Twitch at the moment. Okay. Wow. For a 2011 wow. game, it's pretty, I'm um, pretty strong. 2013 on PC. Um, yeah. uh, that's true. Yeah. And then, Andrew, you're back. Welcome back. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of traveling. Easter kind of screwed up uh, last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're here on the episode that counts. The big one. <laughs> episode 69. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's a party, isn't it? Uh, the what, one when everything play? goes wrong. <laughs> what have you been playing this past week? Um, pretty much all I've been playing is Mortal Kombat 11. That came out on Tuesday. So lots of learning. I just jumped online like yesterday for the first time. So I beat the story. Okay. You know, most that took like maybe five hours to do. Oh. Um, it's not long. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I jumped in training mode, and just kind of messed around. I messed around in training mode for like two hours or so with like Scarlet. So uh, she's. I think she, I'm gonna play her, and then I've been playing a little bit online today. You know what? It's it's not. It's I kind of like that game. I think I like it. Um, there's there's some issues, um, not just around the fighting. Like I have a few issues with some of the fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Mike's been playing it as well. Yeah, um, well, I'll talk about that here in a moment. Okay. Okay. I, I well, I want to get your opinion really quick. Uh, do you how do you like do you like the fighting? Do you, do you enjoy the? the, the oh story? yeah, no, uh, the fighting has been pretty good. I've been enjoying learning the game alongside with having the AI just. Yeah. Oh wait a second! He just performed a brutality. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, but no, I've been, yeah, no, I've been enjoying the game so far myself. Um, been having lots of fun learning the game, learning the mechanics, and also learning from the AI because I didn't know about this about Injustice too. But apparently, you could have the AI fight on your behalf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's like a fun way to be able to learn how to play the game by watching the AI play for you, so to speak. Really? And, okay. Apparently the AI does a great job in farming all the miscellaneous stuff, but you know we'll get yeah. to that later we'll on get, for sure. We'll mm-hmm. get to that stuff, but yeah, it's it's good. Uh, I don't need to go too into detail, but I, there's some mechanics of that game that just are beside the fight the the fighting aspects of the game. Right, I don't, mm-hmm. I'm like, why is this a thing? Like, I don't like the fate. What is it called? Crushing blows. Yeah, the uh, crushing blows or no fatal blows. That's what it is. The, no, not the super one. What's the one where you like hit a dude and it's like. You know what I'm talking about? But I don't even know what it's called. Well, I mean, uh, there's the fatal blows, there's the brutalities. So, like, the not. The one, like, hey, like, your uppercut, if you counter hit on an uppercut, it's gonna, like, do more damage. Oh! I forgot what it's called. But yeah, no, it is crushing blows. It is crushing blows. Where you have to do the specific circumstances to be able to have, like, a x ray esque like. Yeah. That does, like, extra damage, bounce up, all that fun jazz. And, There's like, you can only do it once per match, but it's, like, it can happen <laughs> at such random times. Yeah. There's, like, a, yeah, it's, like, a, it, there's these moves that basically will just destroy you, and some people have, some characters just have just too powerful. So, mm. like, you counter hit on the grab, and all of a sudden you lost, like, I don't know, 35% of your health. It's, like, what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. But that's, that's me getting nitpicky. 
Okay. Um, playing anything else or just Mortal Kombat 11? No, just just jump, just Mortal Kombat. I put a little bit of Sek uh, Sekiro. All right. Um, over last weekend, I beat a certain boss that was like, I beat a couple bosses, I guess. Which one? Or which one? I went to I went to the Fountainhead Palace and I beat okay. the, the very first boss of Fountainhead Palace. So you got corrupted monk down. The yes. One. Okay. Nice. Yes. Okay. So slowly, slowly, it's like one of those games you can play. It's like. I'm gonna beat one boss. I feel good about myself. I can turn it off, and I'll come back when I feel like it. Yeah, unless you're um, super into it, that's probably the way to play it. You know. Just like, yeah, I was super into it, but now that you know, it's it's getting you know, I'm starting to play other stuff. It's uh, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of that's kind of how I'm going through it now. All right, that's fair. And then uh, the person Andrew has been talking to you about Mortal Kombat 11 <laughs> is Mike. How are you? Welcome back, sir. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to hold back on my introductions a bit early, but whatever. No, How's it going, everyone? That's I'm, I'm glad to be back, especially for this week of all weeks. Because usually whenever I come on the show, I usually struggle to figure out stuff to talk about. This week, though, way too much to talk about. No so shortage of really things. Really happy to be back so soon. Yeah, no shortage of things. All right. Um, anything else for you, Mike, besides Mortal Kombat 11? Or... Uh, well, right now that a lot of uh, games right now are currently doing like their own seasonal stuff right now. Yeah. Uh, the Division 2 just finished their invasion kind of event. Um, Monster Hunter World has gone back into the Spring Fest, so enjoy your free events for that, everyone. Okay. Um, Overwatch is still currently going through the Archives events, and the anniversary is coming up here pretty soon. And yeah, I've also been playing Mortal Kombat 11 offhand, and you know, I've already mentioned everything I said about that already, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna let you know, just keep murdering people doing the podcast, so that's gonna be fun. All right. Awesome. awesome. But, um, yep, yeah, outside of that, though, I'm also working on a few other small little tidbits of this and that, but, you know, when it's ready, it's ready. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. This past week for me, I started a secondary play, uh, second playthrough of Sekiro. Uh, New Game Plus it. Uh, I'm already almost through the entire game. Like, I made it to Fountainhead Palace in, like, three hours. So, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> it's just, I'm just blazing through it. I've only died, actually, once or twice, so... Dang. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's really. You gotta, hit the... you gotta ring that bell, make it harder. I'm thinking about it for my next playthrough, because just like things are just yeah. easy mode, you know? Yeah. But. <laughs> if you were to new plus, if you were to new game at plus plus, does it get even harder? Yeah, does it does. Not matter it anything? does. Okay, okay. Yeah. What, what I heard seven? apparently goes up to seven, apparently. Seven. Oh. And, then the, and then it's like you can still plus off that, but it doesn't get any harder. So. Sure. Yeah. And you're still getting, like, the memories and stuff to make yourself stronger? Yeah, you still whatever. get memories. You no longer get prayer beads, though. So... Okay. Yeah. Right. You, you're capped out on health and posture, but you can keep increasing your attack power as long as uh, you keep feeding memories. And I guess there's, like, a certain way to... I was watching a YouTuber talk about this, although he only briefly mentioned it. There's, like, an item or, like, some person you can talk to to exchange, like, five steel points to increase attack power like a memory would. So mm. I believe that's the, the the mask fragments. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, I believe that's the mask. So if you get all the pieces of the masks, you can do that. Okay. So there's like one from the carp dude. There's one from like a random vendor. I don't know where they're all at, but. Yeah, okay. Well, okay. I have an idea of what to do then. All right. So <laughs> I, I might pursue that. And then, yeah, so on one, unless you go, so there are like four endings to Sekiro. There's the stand. There's the immortal severance. There's the Shura. There's the purification and the homecoming. The right. secret one is considered the homecoming, and I got the homecoming on my first playthrough. Although, only through if you go through the purity ending, can you get the last mm. two prayer beads that you need to get the tenth prayer necklace. And so on this playthrough, I'm going to do the purification, end, or it's like do a lot of the steps for the purification ending to get to the point where you get the last two prayer beads. Because hmm. with this ending, you go through um, you go through a different version of Harada Estate again later in the game, and then oh, okay. and then you fight uh, the owl again, and then another boss that I'll give you prayer beads. So okay, yeah, cool. So yeah, that's the plan for that. And then other than that, a uh, little bit of Civ 6, and that's all I can really remember playing this past week. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the main site is, of course, cultureofgaming.com, and then facebook.com slash cod.net, facebook.com slash powerpod. We have a community Discord, which you're now very actively chatting in under, under the direction of uh, Anthony here. So 
Although it's still just us talking to each other. It's still just us <laughs> well, talking to each other. Well, I mean, in fairness, I also kind of take blame for that, for putting that thought into Anthony's mind, so I apologize to the staff. Okay. Anyway, so, yeah, uh, a link to the community Discord is on the right-hand side sidebar of our main site. Click it. You'll be joined. Oh, and, and down below in the Twitch channel, apparently. I should stay up to date mm -hmm. as to what happens down there. All right. And the then... Nice we started our Twitch channel to get with the top. I'm pretty sure I put it there, actually, come to think of it. Yeah, wow. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. Good job. Twitter, at C-O-G-D-O-T-N-E-T, -E and then Instagram, slash, or at Culture of Gaming, YouTube.com, slash Culture of Gaming, Twitch.tv, slash Culture of Gaming. If you're listening to my voice right now as we are live, you are there right now. And MySpace.com, slash PowerPod. The audience watching us live can ask us questions through any of these channels, and we will try to answer them as we best see fit. However, we would much prefer it if you ask your questions either in the community Discord or in the Twitch chat. So, yeah, if you really want your question to answer, ask it in one of those two places. Anyway, so, getting into the gaming news, uh, or leading topic for this week, is Nintendo has some interesting business woes going on with it. Now, I'm going to preface this segment here by saying, we're in no way saying Nintendo is doomed. In fact, it's probably quite the opposite, you know? <laughs> Nintendo yeah. could literally burn cash for like a decade and still be fine. Okay? It's like they've existed for over 125 years or something stupid like that. Okay? It's like Nintendo is fine. So that's not the point of this segment. We're just pointing out kind of a lot of things are happening with Nintendo right now. So last week and uh, falling into this week also, I think we might have mentioned it uh, last time on the podcast, but Nintendo has been cleared to sell the Switch in China, which mm -hmm. caused their stock to rise about a healthy 5%. Okay? Investors were heavy, uh, liking that part. And then uh, earlier this week, uh, Nintendo sale, uh, Switch sales projections missed their mark by like 50,000 units. They were like 50,000 below in uh, their projected sales. And that didn't, like, investors didn't like that, so their stock fell again. But then they kind of stabilized once Nintendo started projecting overall growth for the rest of the year because uh, announcing, or it's like kind of confirming that there's going to be a Switch hardware refresh in the form of like a kid's Switch, so to speak. The Switch Pro, so to speak, probably won't come until next year. Um, and that's coming for the president himself. And then they're also predicting that Pokemon Sword and Shield will sell a lot of Switch units. And then also Mario Kart World Tour will sell a lot of Switch units also and be popular on the software side. So... Wait, what's Mario Kart World Tour? Have I lost something here? It is apparently the unannounced Mario Kart game that they just kind of soft announced mm -hmm. with this. For my boss. So essentially the Mario Kart 9, right? Yes. yes. Is it? Uh, it's not, it's not wait. mobile? Oh, is wait, it mobile? Wait, this, Am I yeah, this is mobile. I think that's the mobile one. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, the World okay, Tour okay. sales part was part of, like, boosting their software sales. I'm sorry for oh, okay, categorize okay. the hardware stuff. My bad. My bad. Yeah. So, yeah. What what do we think about Nintendo? Andrew, what's your hot take here? Um, Nintendo, well, like you said, it's never going to go. They're not going to go away unless something catastrophic happens. And, they, yeah. and they've actually been through catastrophic stuff already, like the Wii U. So, and they're still here. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it, you know. They'll be fine, obviously. I think the revision will probably help them. Um, it does seem like Switch sales have slowed down a little bit. Yeah. Um, there also hasn't been like that killer app since the first year. Was it the first year it came out? So is it about two years? Uh, yeah, it's been about two years. Yeah. So like, it's been two yeah, years they haven't had a killer. Yeah, they haven't had like killer app in like in 2018. I don't think so, really. No. Um, um definitely not this year. And they don't have any, and they don't really have any like killer apps. Like they have them announced, but they're not like with dates. I feel like, um, like Metroid Prime Four is not dated. That's and, like, still way far off too. Like, yeah, right, exactly. So all their stuff that's gonna really push people. And I mean, I guess Super Super Smash. Sword and Shield. Oh yeah, you're right. Sword and Shield has <laughs> probably has that. That'll be their one thing, right? That's gonna come and boost them up when they need Town, it. Down, um, perhaps. Because that's done by the uh, that's done by the people who do Pokemon. Is that Animal Crossing? Animal Crossing. No, no, also? no. Uh, yeah, well, that too. But Town was one that they were that. It was I don't like know what that is. RPG set in one town where you fend off like monsters and whatnot. It's made oh, okay. by the Pokemon Company or somebody mm -hmm. who uh, Game Freak made by them. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is coming um, this year as well. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. maybe that'll work. I don't know. I just. They don't, like, the Pokemon one will definitely help them. But yeah, they'll be fine, you know. 
in stock is all investor stuff. So like investors are never happy. I feel like so. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's reasonable. No, Anthony? I mean or... investors only want more money. So if you can't give them all the money in the world, sometimes, right? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Anthony, what do you think? Nintendo. How's to Nintendo's me, path this... going? <laughs> to me, this is actually a good thing because it's kind of where it's kind of Nintendo doesn't really care where. I mean, sure, investors are definitely important to game companies and any company, really. But Nintendo don't really... Like, they're more focused on the product that they're pushing out. They're not rushing to get stuff out. They're not rushing to, you know, oh, here's Metroid Prime 4 in two weeks' time. Half finished. We're going to update it like what happened with Anthem. Yeah. Um, to me, they're taking that... Like, sure, they didn't really release that much in 2018. They haven't really had the best start this year. But Nintendo will do what Nintendo does best, and they're doing all they can. They've got a lot of stuff lined up still. Um, whether it's, I mean, even if it doesn't really have a release date, it still kind of keeps people interested. So, okay. I mean, keep doing what you're doing. Really, they're not. It's not like they're going to go under or anything like that. All right, Mike. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said at the very start, that. It seems like everyone just loves to go ahead and say Nintendo is dead or dying through one means or another. And like what Andrew pointed out too, that I would imagine that the debacle with the Wii U is much more, and was probably much more fatal in comparison to not meeting your mark with the Switch units. Right. And keep in mind, it you know, only fell oh, below yeah, by 50,000 units. Like, that's yeah, that's not, not really mm, much if compared consider... to like what most other people try to go to try to sell their games and such. It's yeah. like 50,000 is kind of like a toss in the bucket, which could probably be made up for maybe later on with better <coughs> software, if you will, perhaps. But right. And it's like, I'll say that, though. Yeah. Yeah, 50,000 is a drop in the bucket, considering Nintendo has sold about 35 million Switch units. You know? Yeah, it's, it's like... basically... Yeah, it's what's confirmed recently that it was, like, the most highest-selling Nintendo console ever that it just beat out the 64, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I don't know about the Wii. Actually, I was gonna say the, the Wii and the Game Boy are pretty, pretty high. Yeah. Effect. Well, I mean, it did pass the 64. I did hear that part, but um, yeah, yeah it got mixed up a bit. But no, yeah, no, definitely for sure though. Nintendo has a lot of things in the waiting still. We've got plenty of things to be looking forward to. Not to mention that we don't exactly know what else that they might have in the waiting too, because. You know, considering for what some people were expecting to see earlier this week, which I'm going to talk about once we get to my segment, that, you know, there could still be plenty of surprises coming around the corner still. So I would yeah. say that Nintendo's still in a very healthy spot, all things considered. And even if they weren't, you know, God, they'd have so much money to burn. They might as well have a bonfire and still be <laughs> spread for another half century of need be. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah, so it's like, I think if you take just any one of these things... Nintendo will have a really good year, like certainly a profitable year, and it's like it's still reasonable for me for them to project growth, even if only one of these things were to happen. So it's like, say for example, the Switch wasn't cleared to sell in China, just based off what Pokemon, like mainline Pokemon games, have a record of doing to hardware sales for Nintendo. It's like, yeah, okay, definitely they're going to move a lot more Switch units with Pokemon Sword and Shield coming out this year. Okay, and then, mm-hmm. yeah, or say it's like Pokemon Sword and Shield wasn't coming out this year, but they were just going into China. Switch will probably be yeah. immensely popular in China. So, and then, obviously, they're going to start moving a lot more hardware units if they do, in fact, uh, put on sale, like, the the Switch Lite? I don't know how I would describe this thing. Like, the toned-down Switch a little bit. The there were two sp- different versions that were being rumored, right? That yeah. it was supposed to be the, P- and the Switch Lite. That a lot of people have said, like, you know, it's the Switch portable, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, there's why are you saying that? Yeah, there was going to be, like, a, the, so the rumors, and we talked about this a little bit on the show, was going to be, there's a Switch Lite, which was supposed to be, like, more, I'd say closer Hand to build. the, I would say closer to the design of the Switch as it is now. But mm. then there was going to be, like, yeah. a Switch Pro, or something like that, which was going to be more, like, a premium, sort of, like, handheld console, so... Uh, maybe a glass screen, 1080p screen, you know, beefed up hardware, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, although, I think I forgot to link the statement of source, but the Nintendo's president um, has said that's like, that particular SKU, the Switch Pro, so to speak, isn't coming this year. He basically right. just directly responded to the Forbes article talking about it. And so... Yeah, um, he also shot down the rumors of any hardware reveal set this year's E3 as well. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead and lower your expectations on that standpoint as well. Yeah. Which is... I, mean, I, I don't 
Well, don't wait. know if you mentioned they did, they said the kid version or like whatever is like will be able to be docked as well. So yeah, it's not like it's a portable <laughs> thing. I think the way I think the way they're gonna do it is kind of have like the Joy Cons non de- non detachable. I reckon, and just yeah. where you've got to kind of buy a pro controller or whatever, or twenty dollar one off Amazon or whatnot. <laughs> they just... would, or like, and as well, maybe make it a bit smaller. But that would be kind of the only way they can make it cheaper. Yeah. I reckon. All the switches should be like that, so just no one can play Mario Party anymore. <laughs> what? I'm all for that. Don't you like this magic? Come on, it's so nice. I reckon it's stupid to be honest, having them detachable. I mean, well, it's in, I mean, it's like my only controller, so. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, I tried, it's like, I remember, it's like the first, uh, so it's like, I got the Switch on a launch night or whatever, right? And it's like, I only mm-hmm. bought the Switch itself that night, as long as, as well as some Amiibos and the game. Um, <laughs> yeah. the Wild, of course. And, um, I remember, it's like the two hours that I was able to sink into Breath of the Wild that night, um, because I had class <laughs> in the morning. It was just like, using the little included, like, Joy-Con, like, Doc. combiner thing that they had. Yeah. It was just like, oh, God, this is so narrow for me. So it's, it's very like, narrow, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, uh, when I got out of class the next morning, I went, uh, it's like I went and got a pro controller first thing. But you got hand cramps, you can't go to school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so uh, just to kind of uh, shed a little light on what's coming this year. So you got Super Mario Maker 2. Oh, that's, oh, that's like June. That one's going to be a big one for sure, actually. That's like June. That's June. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's coming this year, though. Okay. Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses, which is in July. Astral Chain, whatever that is. Uh, Zelda Link's Awakening. Oh. Damon X Machina, Mac- 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 or however you say it. Yeah. Uh, Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion 3. Pokemon, uh, Sword and Shield. Town, which is a working title. Uh, Marvel's Ultimate Alliance 3. Dragon Quest. Uh, whatever that is, some Japanese name. Eleven. Bayonetta three, three I guess. Okay. I uh, think Metro- Bayonetta three is kind of like Metroid Prime four at this point, yeah, where these... it's like we have a little to work on off that. These are like rumored titles, and Shin Megami Ten, which is something that they're planning. I think they're looking at doing this year or something. None of these. Okay. So it's like, I don't think any of these games have like a universal appeal, like Breath of the Wild might. But mm. there's at least something. I don't know. For... Mario Maker Two might actually. Uh, Just a mm. touch. I don't know. Like, maybe. If unless you like platformers, then people probably don't really, you know. But um. Still yeah. interested how it. How then it's there's it. nothing like big, AAA kind of that's gonna really rock the console. Kind but of thing. the point that I was saying to was like, there's at least something for everyone here. Yeah. You know. So it's yeah. Like, you know, mm. It's like I'm probably good for like Pokemon and Animal Crossing this year. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then um, Astral Chain, just to also remind people, it is being developed by a Platinum Games, so a lot of high expectations on that one, of course, so we'll see how that plays out. Okay. Mm. Slight tangent here. Did you guys see Retro has job openings for Metroid Prime 4? So, yeah, they're hiring for mm. MP4. So that's definitely not far along at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess, uh, depending on what they're hiring for. But... Right. Yeah. Um. Hold on, let me look up. Let me look up what it's deadly. Oh, that's, that's funny. You look at uh, 2017, like, graph of games coming out, Metro Prime 4. <laughs> 2017, <laughs> not quite. Um, oh, we might even see, like, a Metroid uh, trilogy, even, this year. Like, a port or something. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. That'd be nice. Because they're going to not... Uh, I mean, do you think it's possible that they'll do Prime 4 next year? No. I reckon it's like two years off. No. Yeah. I feel like we'll be on a full-fledged, like, Switch 2 sort of console before yeah. Prime 4 comes out. Like, I don't think okay. any current or immediate future version of the Switch will see Metroid Prime 4. So, yeah, that's trying Fair to be Yeah. I'm trying to... All I can find... So it's like, literally, Retro tweeted the other day that Retro is hiring for Metroid Prime 4. And that's it. <laughs> Pointing to the career page. Uh, now the tweet's gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find any sort of, like, someone to parse through what openings there were. Everything. Uh, okay, screw it. I just looked to the actual thing itself. Um, current openings. Art director. 
product tester, art outsourcing contract, level three IT engineer, level one gameplay engineer. Uh, what is this? Lead external environment artist, um, lead character artist, lead cinematographist, lead graphics artist, level three wow. engine engineer, uh, level one tools engineer, level three tools engineer, physics engineer. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I don't think Metroid Prime 4 will be on the Switch. Like, on anything <laughs> called the Switch at this point. Well, do we think <laughs> they could be working on another Donkey Kong game, perhaps? Like, alongside it, so that's why they're kind of hiring as well? Maybe. Hey. That could be a possibility. A yeah. side game, perhaps, while, you know, while they finalize the Metroid Prime 4, it's like, okay, here's what you're actually going to be working on. <laughs> <laughs> That'd, that'd be, be, that'd be baity. Twist. That'd be really baity, actually. Because it's like, I don't know, it's like, you imagine like some art dude out there applying to be like, lead, like to work on like sci-fi stuff before, like applies to uh, be the art director, he gets it, and he turns out he's working on like Donkey Kong stuff. <laughs> <laughs> feel really bad for him. Uh, I feel like oh, I can make a mention to EA about that, but I'm going to leave that alone. No, go ahead. <laughs> Well, no, and like how for Visceral, how they were known for Dead Rising, and then suddenly they got tossed to do the Battlefield Hardlines games. Oh, or yeah. Or Hardlines or whatever. Okay. You know, not to go to say that that's what's going to happen here, of course, but it's like, yeah. wow, that would be rather dark if that actually did happen. Yeah. Oh, like destroyed urban environments, not a... Like, you know, between Dead Rising and uh, Battlefield Hardline. That's, I don't know, there's some overlap there. That space. was Dead Space. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. You said Dead Rising. Oh, you said Dead Rising too. You did. Oh, too. okay. I meant to say <laughs> Dead Space. I'm sorry. Okay, Dead Space. What uh, are we talking about? I don't even know. Yeah, okay. Is yeah, it that, obvious that my brain doesn't function well at sometimes? No, it's okay. I was like, <laughs> that, that also, that was like a double what the hell in my head. I was like, wait, Viserol <laughs> did Dead Rising? What? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you I'm want not fully awake. I need more caffeine. Yeah, do you want? I didn't question it. Okay. But, all right. Sorry. So, uh, any last bits to say about Nintendo? Does anyone still use their Switch regularly? Because, like, I admit, I really don't. Like, unless the odd time I want to, like, play Smash, I really don't use my Switch. It's just like... Same. But... I, I brought it along with me last week when I traveled. I didn't even turn it on. Okay. Oh. Uh, that might be a, me. I mean, that... I was with family and stuff, so that's part of it, but... But is that, is that like, thinking kind of like, a, you know, getting real kind of into discussion. Is that a sign of a bad console when you buy something no. and you never use it? Because I feel well, like I that's... did that with the Vita and <laughs> well, maybe. But... I don't know. Yeah. It seems like that's <laughs> like how the Nintendo systems usually do work from time to time, where it's like, you know, there's a great game that's out, you go to play it and then it's like, until the next game comes out, it's just gonna collect dust until further notice. Because I know that outside of maybe, because I've been meaning to try to get the um, Joker and Smash Ultimate, to go ahead and play with them, but outside of that, though, yeah, no, the Switch has basically been on the ch on the charger and waiting for the next game to come out. Mm. It's just like a harder sell than like yeah. I feel like than like a PS4 or an Xbox. You're like, oh, you can just watch. Like my PS4 is probably on at least once a day, whether it's to watch TV, you know, watch Netflix or play a game. It's just, yeah. Maybe it's on once a day. Okay. Whereas like the Switch is maybe on once a week. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. With how invested Weird. I am in, like, PC gaming and whatnot, mm -hmm. it's like, uh, you know, it's like the Switch <sighs> is good for that odd game that comes around and everything. Like, you know, the first year with the Switch was great. I was playing Breath of the Wild, like, yeah. all the time. You know, that was uh -huh. great. 2018 kind of died off, or it was like the first half of 2018 kind of died off, and then Octopath came around, and I was super into that. Yeah. For a bit and that was a which is kind of pc <laughs> yeah and that was like a, that was like a solid 90 hours and oh i have some thoughts on octopath being a pc i don't <laughs> think it's like that that game works like perfectly on switch so it's just like, i don't plan on picking up on pc but yeah you know octopath was like a fun 80 to 90 hours or so of an rpg on the switch and then that was finished 2018 and then it's like for this year uh i don't know like i'll probably pick up pokemon uh, I don't want to spoil Mike's topic, but um, if Persona 5 uh, came to Switch, I would have been good for that also. And then I'll mm -hmm. yeah, probably be good. Yeah, and then I'll probably be good for Animal Crossing too this year. I'll mm -hmm. probably go Zelda: Link's Awakening. Um, maybe Ultimate Alliance 3. Oh yeah, I forgot about mm -hmm. Link's Awakening. And Damon X mucking up because that looks awesome. <laughs> But like Smash, it's like, craziness. but it's like, so it's like with Smash and everything, which, you know, I picked up, uh, and, uh, when it came out also, it was like, 
I, that to me is such a depressing game to play by yourself, and I don't like the multiplayer in it. I don't like the multiplayer in it. So it's like you know, like the online or yeah, the online really? multiplayer. I don't like the online multiplayer yeah. to it because there's no like the online still needs to get tweaked. Yeah, there's no like standard subset of rules. I don't like that at all. Oh right, right, right. And so it's just like to me, it's like the real value of having Smash is like when you have like four buddies over or something, you know, mm -hmm. and you're just going at each but, other in the same room. I mean, Smash yeah. isn't a game that you can. It's not like a game like Zelda or whatever that you can just grind yourself. You know, it's a party right. game and it's where right. it's like exactly. a, you sit down with friends and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and I think that might be kind of an issue with Nintendo consoles. Like they got Mario Party, Mario Tennis, Mario Kart, all these kind of party games. And you, I don't know, like there's pro, there's not, to me at least, it's not really enough to play in a sense. Okay. To really kind of get me hooked. It's there's still, a party, I mean, not many games to play by yourself, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Tons of indie games, but that, uh, you know, if, you're, if you don't P want PC, it. you pay 20 yeah. bucks FIFA on PC. Right, it's going to say, unless, yeah. unless, unless you want to play it on the couch or something, then, yeah. Have they put Kerbal Space Program on the Switch yet? No, okay. I don't think so. Damn. That Kerbal game, Space. would that game run on well on the Switch? Uh, I feel like that graphic. game has issues, like, on PS4. Graphically, it's not an issue. CPU is the big thing. But I don't yeah, know. it's because there's so much I like, physics. Yeah, like, yeah, if a stock model PS4 could do it, then that's what you do it. Although they'd struggle. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think there was some issues on the PS4 version of it just being like far behind the the, uh, the PC version. Okay. Uh, mm. Like in terms of like what was in like the, uh, content wise. Oh, this is totally different. But you know what else I played right, this week, uh, this past week. I got back into Eve because uh, the, no, no. the long standing alliance I'm with, uh, we had an eviction attempt on uh, Thursday. So, and so they brought me they brought me back out of retirement to do it. And I recorded, I might uh, pull this my drive and post it to like the COD chat later or something. I recorded like our massive like mobilization and called the arms and everything. So I might, I might post that. Anyway, sorry. Sorry, that was totally off the record <laughs> or that was totally off the wall. Um, Did you get like a war a warriors send off when you retire? <laughs> no, okay. no, you yeah, pretty much just stop playing the game. I hadn't played. I hadn't logged in in like a solid eight months. Ten so. guns loot or whatever it is. What is, what is it? Burned his body in a pyre. His little yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Flag. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I might post a video of what a, like a mobilization and evil it's like. So. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, so. uh any last little bits to talk about the Switch? Uh, or rather, I guess we should answer Anthony's ultimate question. Is the Switch a bad console? <laughs> uh, oh, everyone loves that thing. Yeah, I think for like the... For, for 10 minutes out of a year. Can you restart your webcam, Benjamin, please? Oh, far out. Um, I, I, was, I, was, I, haven't, I don't have the Mortal Kombat 11 version of, um, of the Switch version, but it's... I, I was, they put that on Switch? No. Yeah, they put it on Switch. It but doesn't run as good as other consoles, but... It, it, looks, plays. it looks kind of... I mean, it looks... Well, I've seen some stuff. What did they uh, put on Switch? Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat 11. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen some stuff of it, like, it crashing, and, like, just the screen is, like, tearing, like, crazy. Jax's beard... Jax's oh, no. beard is, like, sparkly. Like, it's... <laughs> <so crazy. laughs> Love Cassie it. Cage rips into a guy's stomach and yet her hands are perfectly clean. I mean, that's not even what I'm worried about. I'm more worried about like how that censorship like, functions. It's just like it looks very really washed out. Like, okay. You know, obviously it's going to take a graphical hit, but it just yeah. looks very washed out. Um, you mean a 2019 game, game is difficult to run on 2017 hardware? Dude, I mean, it game. reminds me like I had uh, Mortal Kombat 9 on my Vita years and years. It's like it's literally the same thing, like of how. The comparison between the two is just uncanny. Okay. I don't think it's like I don't think necessarily the Switch is a bad console. It's just like it's definitely not the main thing I play games on, you know, and that's yeah. why it's yeah. so little. Yes. Yeah. So that's still going to be PS4 or Xbox One for many people. The Switch is just a side console for many, for many at this point. The Switch is it's, a gamer side hoe. It's so weird to say this. It's expensive hey, and like. Yeah. I mean, it's more expensive than most tr the mo like most home consoles nowadays. Well, it's... more expensive than a base PS4. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or not even any even. Well, I guess base PS4 would be. So a good an actual model. an actual good um, 
like a good comparison in a sense is you know how you get your value out of back like a game or console or whatever yeah if you pay say 500 bucks for a console or 400 dollars you should then be able to get 400 hours out of it oh, in order to never get heard your... that oh i've done oh, well, i've done over 300 hours on my switch so it's fine um fair enough yeah hmm. Uh, so, I don't know, that's, to me, that's kind of an unfair comparison, though, because keep in mind the PS4 and Xbox One base models launched in 2013. I mean, yeah, I came out more. four years, Switch came out four years but later. they're still, like, even now, they're just more feature-rich than the Switch is. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, like, the whole, like, X, uh, Xbox Game Pass and Games with Gold and PlayStation Plus and all that kind of thing, I kind of feel Nintendo kind of needs to jump in that kind of like those kind of programs more to try and bring more people in to play the console and to also like for instance like someone like me yeah. if i want to play you know a game like um super mario odyssey or whatever um i don't particularly want to pay 80 dollars for it i want to you know if they had like a 30 dollar program that you can pay 30 dollars a month and have access to all these different games like what Obviously, it's a bit more expensive because their games are more expensive than other consoles. I kind of feel that's something they really need to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think you're a hater. Oh, <laughs> get a life, dude. <laughs> I think you're just a hater. Okay. I know. Well, I really do enjoy the Switch. Like, no, I know. It's a, it's a good console. Uh, yeah. Your point's it's a good reasonable. Console. Your point's reasonable. I feel like more. That's the thing. I know Nintendo gets away with a lot just because they are Nintendo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like not dropping the prices on their games and just kind yeah. of like some like really not, not... an online that actually works properly. Yeah, like they're not very consumer friendly stuff sometimes. But then they go and put like Cuphead on the Switch and everything. Like, and then it's like yeah, super consumer friendly. Yeah. But uh, I, don't know. I don't know. I think so much of that comes down to like Nintendo <clears throat> isn't very diverse when it comes to their business model. To be quite honest, so it's like you know mm -hmm. their primary drivers of sales and profits is um you know games a man in a red jumpsuit yeah is like <laughs> hardware and software right yeah, a plumber it's like, that's and it's what like you know nintendo makes video games and, and video game consoles and that's about it right did you uh did you hear they got they officially got out of the health and wellness like did you oh that no game that came out recently yeah like, yeah <laughs> they got out of the health and wellness game i guess they were gonna make like a Fitbit or something like that. That'd be I cool. Know. I don't know if I like more like, than yeah, 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 to run or something. That'd be cool. It was Switch Fit. Yeah. Yeah. They were officially or like canceled all that stuff. Okay, but then anyway. So my greater point was, uh, you know, you look at like Sony or something, where it's like, mm -hmm. not only do they make video games I'm sometimes, sure. not only do they TV make video game online. consoles also, but they also make phones, Blu-ray players, TVs, DVD players, cameras movies. of all sorts. Movies. Yeah, I movies. Mean, Sam, it's like Sony is very, very diverse. And everything. Headsets, cameras, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, same with Microsoft mm -hmm. also. Not only <laughs> do they make, you know, the AdSpots and some games also, but they also make, uh, you know, the most widespread operating system in the world for mm -hmm. uh, consumer PCs. They, yeah, it's like they're all sorts of different stuff. Yeah, also. you can just say computers and just drop it right there. <laughs> so it's like if any one of these, uh, you know, hardware divisions of either company, uh, Sony and Microsoft, operates at a loss, that's fine. I don't want to say it's almost expected, but, you know, it's like, yeah. it's not surprising if they operate at a loss, but because, you know, they make up the profits and other divisions of the company. But then it's like, right. Nintendo, this is pretty, it's like games are pretty much their business. You know? Mm. Yep. So, yeah. Um, I mean, they're in the licensing business as well. Obviously, they license their stuff out. But... Yeah, yeah. With that argument, though, you'd think they would try and do... Like, try and... In my book, at least, you'd think they would try and appeal to gamers more and try and, you know, give gamers, like, a more app... Like, uh, feature-rich console, more apps. Mm -hmm. You know, turn it into kind of a... Something that you can kind of you like what you can do with the Xbox One or PS4. You'd think that they would kind of jump on board with that a lot more, a lot readily. I just don't. Yeah. Think, I don't. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there's really a point to using like the Switch as like a YouTube machine or something. Because like your phone is just about as big as a Switch screen, you know, and it has a nicer display. Also. What phone have you got? <laughs> no, I mean it's not the same size, but it's definitely. Yeah, I'd rather yeah. watch it on my phone than my Switch for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm like I'm more saying so people kind of sink more hours into a console than they kind of like well if I'm gonna buy a game I'll buy it on the switch rather than barely using it 
Well, I mean, talk to I Ethan, mean, and that's, like, his whole thing. It's just like, <laughs> you know, Ethan will buy literally anything on the Switch, you know? So, yeah, yeah. And nothing to I him, think it but comes... it's just, like, his main thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. It comes down to, like, obviously video games are, like, sure is thing that people, not everyone can afford and all that stuff. But, like, the Switch is in this weird, like, I think category of its own where it only functions to do, like, one thing, and that's play games. Um, whereas, like, you know, you can pick up a PS4 and you can, like, kind of convince yourself or an Xbox one to convince yourself, like, look, I... It's gonna play my DB, my Blu-rays. It's gonna. I'm gonna be able to watch Netflix on it. I'm gonna be able to do this on it. Whereas, mm. like when you get the Switch, it's just like it's I'm video just games. Gonna be able to play. Yeah, and I mean that's, you know, that's great. Yeah, but yeah, it's and just, then I'm oh, sorry. No, I just it's just not as appealing. I think to like it's cool because Nintendo and, and people love Nintendo and it's like a mass market thing. But like when it comes down to it, like when you dig, you know, if you're yeah. like, if you can only get one, and you're like, well, I'm gonna get. A, the cheaper one that probably does more stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, but the other thing to also bear in mind is that the main thing about the Switch also is the idea of the portability to take the games with you on the go. But, you know, if you're going to be mostly gaming at your household, then, you know, the Switch kind of loses half of its popularity right there because what's the point of getting the Switch if you could go to get an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 if you're basically going to be gaming at your household the majority of the time anyway? Right, yeah, and that's probably exactly. what, and you know, that probably doesn't help the switch out as well in that regards. But mm. I guess there's also, I don't know, say in a hypothetical world, if I had paid uh, 300 and it's like a little more than 300 for just the Switch and Breath of the Wild or something, and that was the only game I ever got on Switch, I would actually be okay with that. Like, I've gotten so much hours of entertainment and everything just off of Breath of the Wild. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, to me, it's like the Switch I, is fine. It's like, I admit that it's like, I don't think I've really touched my Switch in 2019, but it's just like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm fine with that because I've gotten... If I were to never pick up my Switch again, I would be okay with it because I felt like sure. I've already gotten enough entertainment and value out of it. And then also, I just want to raise the point that maybe this is me being biased, but like, if I was at like GameStop or something and deciding between like a two year old, a uh, two year old, the $60 Nintendo game versus like a two year old, but $30 like Sony game, I would probably pick yeah. the Nintendo game just because I kind of know what to expect from that. So, sure. mm, I mean, yeah. like, in summary of my kind of hater ship in a sense, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I just feel like I kind of need to do more. Okay. Like, just make it more appealing to people make it so then you can you kind of using your console more even though it may not be a youtube machine or this or that yeah. i kind of feel i need to bring make people use the console more as well rather than just having it as a gaming machine that is overpriced and games are subsequently overpriced as well all right mike what are you gonna say oh no what i was gonna say was just to go off of your point of the console that you barely use for just a little bit of time but still get a lot of mileage of it yeah in some yeah. regards i feel the exact same way with the playstation 4 because i think was it last year no yeah because um for the last year or two the only times i turned the ps4 on myself has been only been to play god of war and persona 5 outside of that and the Kingdom playstation 3. 4 has been say what and Kingdom Hearts 3. i played the kingdom hearts 3 on xbox one F. Okay. Oh. F. No, I'm not counting that. <laughs> okay. But no, outside of that though, that's um, no, the place. You know, everyone has their primary and their secondary consoles, and mm. I don't see the need to play the PlayStation 4 other than just go to play Persona 5 and God War. All other games, you know, if they're multi-console, I'm gonna go with the console I feel more comfortable with, and you know, Xbox One X, more powerful. PC and mouse. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you gotta bear in mind. I have just barely joined the PC Master Race. I still yeah. have to go through, uh, what you call it, immigration rights and what have you. Immigration and customs. Yeah, I still yeah. need to go through immigration <laughs> and customs to go ahead to fully become a PC Master Gamer. So until and, then, I'm still being seen as a cost peasant. So thank you. And what the citizenship test and I have to use it. <laughs> Hey, I built the PC that Tyler was nice enough to give me the shopping list for. Thank you, Tyler. No so, problem. as far as I see, I'd like to think I will at least get a decent grade for that test, I hope. Uh, I hope. You guys see PC Part Picker, um... Hold on. You guys see, I'm sorry, you guys see PC Part Picker updated <laughs> their website? Um, uh -huh. I don't know where I'm going with that. We didn't use that ESA. Oh, well, uh, okay. Anyway, so... I haven't looked at it since I finished. Okay. Uh... Yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's like PC is obviously my main, like, game machines where the bulk of my hours in gaming come from. PS4 and Switch are just kind of, like, what? play the exclusives, you know, it's like play the ones Andrew, what are you on about? What's so funny? 
Nothing. I'm all right. What? <laughs> what? What? Okay. No, no. I'm just having a moment. It's okay. Fair enough. You want to share with the plastic? That's a good time to roll, huh, Andrew? <laughs> no, no. Okay. I'm listening. All right. Uh, well, you're up. Uh, what, what you got? You're on that stuff. Oh. That was Sorry, a long, okay. That was a long intro segment. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, so we talked a little bit about Mortal Kombat 11 and gameplay stuff, and it's that part is enjoyable. Um, however, there's a lot of stuff around that game um, that maybe not people are uh, so happy about. Uh, so to start it off, it game is got three different currencies in it. It's a okay. fighting game where... Oh, wait. Let me see if I can try to that, that to show up on here. It's a fighting game that, like, you know, it's got single player story mode. It's got these, like, towers, which are basically kind of like an arcade mode. And then it's got these other towers, which have, like, modifiers. There we go. Like, oh, there's a special thing happening while this is going on. So, like, there's lots of single player content. <laughs> um, but there's three currencies. And. I, yeah, I have it highlighted. I don't understand. Like. <laughs> Like, you get the coins, and that's, like, something you buy, right? You, or you just get for playing the game. You win. Yeah. You go to the crypt, and you have to open the chest, and you get stuff. And, like, let me just... God, it's it's so, so confusing. It doesn't implement it well like what Apex Legend does, for instance, where you get the crafting material, craft it's, outfits. It doesn't really explain it, or...? There's... it. No, that explains it. There's just so much, like grinding that you, like you go to the place to unlock what you want to unlock but you have to like find things in the crypt to unlock a door and then if you want to go through this other door you have to have like a consumable to get through that door to get to this other like thing um and it's just so much and like when you're actually playing the game you don't get that much of the currency I mean, I haven't played it a lot, nor do I really want to grind. Mm. I don't... Like, everything is cosmetic. Everything is cosmetic. Um, and that's cool. Like, it's cool to make your character look nice. It's cool to make your character the way you want it. Well, in the limitations of what the games give you, make it look how you want to look. Um, but then, like... So, like, people, you know, you could be like, oh, whatever, it's cosmetic. But at the same time, the game is built around these cosmetics so much that it, it like matters. You know, it matters because it's built around these cosmetics. It's built around like leveling up your dagger, you know, like it's your your mask. And then yeah. you can put an augment in your mask that makes you do 30% more damage or something like that. It's just, this game is so incredibly deep that like, normally I would say it's cosmetic and it doesn't matter. But because like I said, like there's so much going on in it there's so many currencies and so much garbage you have to do like it's yeah. making it it makes the grind that kind of matter because you're like well what the hell man like why 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 can't you just kind of give me a nice steady flow of this stuff because it's just cosmetics anyway you know like i don't want to spend i'm not spending real money to buy a new shirt for kano not uh, to mention that you wouldn't be able to spend that much money to be able to get stuff anyway with the way that the store set up yeah it's weird so like things rotate in and out of the days like, i don't know five items or something like that just um, five yeah so if you really see something you'd be like oh i, I would just i just want that thing you can buy it i have no idea i actually haven't engaged with the um the store because i don't care i guess they're trying to kind of influence people to use uh, like to um sink real world money into it maybe it's not well, even that though because you like because there's only five things in the store oh, yeah okay. like like there's like five things in the store, so like there's no guarantee the thing is gonna ever be there. You know the thing you want. So. Like, uh, so it's not like uh, so if you don't have enough of this, you have this. Like, you can yeah. Two dollars into it to kind of right. credits or whatever. Yeah, and then there's also like the crypt, which is a thing where you unlock. Mm. And in previous Mortal Kombat games, it's been like it's been like a not, kind of like a thing where it's like this is one one. This is 2-2. Two, two. This is like, you know, there's like, there's like a... Uh, you go to this part of the map, of this yeah. part of the crypt, and you can be able to lock this item at this location. Right. There's like, exactly do that. In this there's one. like coordinates in the old... Yeah, yeah okay. This one, well, I mean, coordinates is this, but now it's all randomized. So like, if I unlock a skin in this box, it's going to be most likely be different in Mike's game. Same exact location, same box, same price. It's going to be different stuff. Probably. Okay. 
Yeah, the only exception. Base. Yeah, the only exception to that would be the uh, chests that take the hearts. Yeah, those crates are the same, or those chests are the same for everyone. But the mm -hmm. thing though is that, just to follow up with what was being said earlier, for the three currencies, which are coins, souls, and hearts, you only mm -hmm. get hearts by doing brutalities or fatalities on your opponent. So for those online who are getting constantly fatality, now you know why. And here's yeah. the thing though, you get one heart or one, yeah, you only get one heart per fatality or brutality you perform. And how much is the chest to open those up? 250. Yeah. You have to perform 250 fatalities on the CPUs or human opponents for you to open up one chest. And you gotta bear in mind, there's like 50 of these. I was getting two hearts for doing a brutality. So. Well, yeah, brutalities are harder to pull off compared to fatalities, but all the same, though, that is still a grind in itself to try to pull off those many fatalities just to open up one chest. You have to pull and... off 12,500 fatalities to open all 50 chests. They, you can play, like, the Towers of Time, which will give you, like, more, like when you complete the tower, you'll get, Jesus. like, more hearts or something. Yeah. But these towers are, well, they've been nerfed, actually. In, oh, they're in, cool. they're yeah. incredibly like impossible. Like, I usually look up some of the like YouTube stuff. It's like there's like missiles going on that are unblockable, <laughs> and then you're getting hit with like a missiles, freeze from over here. Lasers, <laughs> freezes, Boracho farts, lasers, yeah. missiles, literally everything that just flies at you. And it's like the game's saying you just have to beat them one time. Yeah. But you're gonna have to fight off like three of these things going up yeah, at one time while your health is getting drained, and their health is getting regenerated. And, ah! There was a oh, really good. Nonsense. There was a good one I saw on my timeline of this guy fighting Shao Kahn, and like he was like you know doing all right against him, and then he got hit with one move and just died instantly. F. And was like ah that was fun, like I got hit once and exploded. Like, yeah, shoot. these people probably shouldn't yeah. play like Dark Souls or something. I don't know. But um, but no, but it was but it's like you, the guy has like way more health than you. You do way less damage, so like it's not a fair fight. And then on top yeah. of that, he hits you once and you explode. So like so Mortal like, Kombat 11 is like the Dark Souls of fighting games. Uh, <laughs> it is. It's really. It does feel kind Actually, of sluggish and slow. So okay. yeah, it is pretty. Okay. It yeah. is, you, the jump is terrible. I'm um, not entirely memeing so. over here. No, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, a little sluggish. Yeah, but just to go ahead and just say this, because I've been actually going on a tangent on this for the last couple of days at various locations, because people have been raising up so much hell about the microtransactions and, oh, it's ruining Mortal Kombat. It's like, do you see what little you could get off the microtransactions in this game? Yeah, you could, I mean, the game will not allow you to spend more than $25 a day at most. And the funny thing is, is that one of, I, I just saw this the other day, um, one of the five items that was in my store, I actually got one of them in the crypt. So yeah. that means that even though I got that item, it's not going to reshuffle it around to give me something else. No, no. It's going to just stay there for the whole day and be like, yep, just wait until tomorrow. You'll get something else tomorrow. And it's like, sure. this is not an effective store. The microtransaction in Mortal Kombat 11 is a complete joke. It's not going to cost you $6,000 I mean, $6, to unlock everything. Yeah. You'll be lucky if the game could even get $5 off of you at this point because of what little it offers you yeah it's like yeah, and yeah. the funny and the worst part of all this is that no matter how bad the grind it is more kind of at 11 you cannot spend five dollars to be able to at least rush the process by any means i mean because the only thing you could spend yeah the only thing you could yeah, like and stuff that'll get you more coins and stuff like that but but no that's the thing though the only thing you could spend your money on besides the cosmetics is just easy fatalities that's it I can understand if it was like, you know, okay, well, here's like five or ten <laughs> skip fight tokens to where um, for the Tower of Time, they give you the option to be able to skip fights, which, you know, considering how bullshit that some fights can get, that, okay, fair enough, but the game doesn't even give you that option. It's yeah. literally forcing you to grind, and it's like, that's what more people are getting pissed off about, that the grind is so bad that you will get to a point to where you wish microtransactions was as bad as what people are <laughs> saying the game actually is. And when, if it gets to that point to where, you know, months from now they do added loot boxes, then yeah, by all means, open that thing, you know, open fire. But until that time, the game's progression is a joke. It's not great. Yeah, you I have mean, six bucks for a character. I, I mean, always, yeah. I always thought the issue was... A character you could unlock in chapter four. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always thought the issue, for what I've heard about Mortal Kombat 11's thing, is just like, 
it heavily incentivizes you to pay because of how brutal the grind is. Like, I always thought, I thought that was the issue. But you can't. Oh, there's, there's not, there's oh, no, not that's it. it. You can't yeah. pay your way out of this. It's a yeah. grind and a half, and you can't buy your way into anything. Oh. That's why I'm laughing at everyone complaining about this. They have no proof. Okay. Because people who complain about it have not picked up Mortal Kombat 11 and know just how bad the grind is. Okay, so, so uh, it's like keep in mind I'm completely I... an external person here. Yeah, right? I don't so play. like basically, Fair yeah. Basically, the store only offers like five items, right? So if you do buy the premium currency, you yeah, you can only buy five items in a day. Perfect. Right? And yeah. you can't pay to like uh, get more parts or get more souls no. or whatever that. No, yeah, so no, 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 you no, can't no, increase. No. You, you can't decrease you can, the grind in a sense. The way you would be able to increase like gaining coins or souls or whatever is by like getting augments which you would put in your customization stuff so it's just it's incredibly deep like what i heard like on a on i think giant bombcast and what i experienced today like i went to the crypt i paid you know fake money coins to open a uh, chest you know and then three things popped out and i didn't know what through those three three things did I have no idea. I got three things I said, I don't even know what these are. What do these even do? Bro, so I don't even know. Stuff, <laughs> I paid like, you know, you pay like the 15,000 <laughs> coins yeah. and then all of a sudden you're getting three things. You don't know what they even do. It's like, well, that was a good box. That was well, <laughs> you know, like spend, you know, fake money. Like, I don't yeah, know. It's, like, it's not a skin. It's not, you know, a, a brutality or fatality <laughs> or, a, you know, some cool concept art. I'm like, what's the, what's the point? Honestly, I would have found it hilarious if this, like, for a few of those chests, the moment you open it up, you just see a giant cartoon bomb and it just blows your character up to smithereens. For some <laughs> I mean, reason, I would just, yeah, no, for some reason, I would have just loved if they just went down that road. It's like, with so many items that you get, that makes it feel like, you know, what's, what's the point of even opening this chest? I kind of felt like that if at least if your character got blown up to smithereens, it's like, well, okay, at least my pain was I got a good laugh out of it. I mean, you could just get like Shao Kahn is giving you the middle finger or something. That'd probably be even better than. than yeah, Shao Kahn really. just pops out of the chest. He says you suck and just goes back into the chest and you have to reopen it to actually get your price. Yeah, and then you have to pay again. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a real grind, and they've they've since uh, changed a few things about the towers. Um, they haven't changed how much you earn or anything, but they changed like some of the health on like the bosses and stuff. So like before, there was like. Some bosses had like 3,000 health, which is Ugh, that's triple. Insane. Which is triple what um, your character would have. But I think they since nerfed it to about a uh, half, 1,500, I think they said, is the most uh, any boss will have now, which is like, you know, still one and a half. It's a little insane. But I'm, I, I guarantee you that these, uh, I haven't really dug too deep into it, but these bosses are still like, they have the one hit kills, they have the. You know, they can combo like you into like losing more than half your health that they wanted to. Yeah, they they changed the like their missiles were used to be unblockable, so you would just have to avoid them. Like, or in the middle of your combo, all of a sudden you're like, boom, you're out of your combo because you got hit by an off screen like hidden missile, Doctor Doom style. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, now they're saying you can block some of these unblockable ones, which is like a step in the right direction. But sounds like Warner Brothers know what they're doing. I mean, I, I think that's well, never. I mean, don't you know from Shadow of Realm, or Shadows of War? Yeah, there was a lot of grind in that game too, right? And yeah, um, in Justice as well, they had that shocking microtransaction. <clears throat> Justice. <too. laughs> but um, yeah, it's we'll see. It's gonna. I assume it's gonna get better. Who who actually knows? Like, there's so much in this game that they're gonna have to change stuff because mm -hmm. no one's gonna actually. I wonder what the I want to see like some behind the scenes stuff like what the numbers are like how many people have unlocked how much of this stuff like what's the yeah how high has anyone got everything like what 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 what's going on here with like that I'm actually curious if they would actually they're never gonna release that but it's just something that'd be interesting seeing yeah who knows but yeah you know the gameplay is good but everything surrounding the gameplay has just been drawing way too much fire as of late mm -hmm. well. And like I, I really have a good time like the, the game, like the, the net code is pretty good when you're playing another wired connection, but I played some wireless people and it's bad. Um, and then I feel like I've played online and got nothing for a win. I'm not gonna get any coins, I didn't get any souls. I was just like, I didn't even get anything for that. And you know, like I got like maybe a hundred when I lost. So it's like, 
uh, grinding online is not a thing, so you have to go play the single uh, like tower stuff to grind. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and like Mike said, you got to do that. It's just the easiest thing to do is put the computer on a very easy, make the AI fight for you, you know, and oh. just do that because that's how you're gonna grind and not put any effort into it, I guess. <laughs> I mean, besides yeah. occasionally checking in on like, ten, you know, do you even have to press a button? Do you, or do you have to like check in on every 10 minutes? The only <laughs> thing I have to do is make sure to hit A just to, to initiate the next fight. Because outside okay. of that, I, because I started the so tower. Just tape the A button. Tape the A just button. Just have a right button. Yeah, yeah. No, if you have an auto fire on the A, then yeah, you could just let it do whatever. But no, I started the tower right as we started the podcast. Um, and so far, my character noob has gone up to like fight 27 up to this point. And you're doing the endless version, or which one are you? Doing? Yeah, I'm doing endless right now. So he's okay. just been murdering people off and off the television right now while we've been chatting. And so far, he's been doing a fair job. But it's like, again, though, that's like 27 fights, and I think we've been talking for like an hour, hour and a half now. And it's like, I think that I've gone like 20 hearts during that time because there's been times where it's like, yeah, he kind of went to trigger happy and just punched someone during the finish him, so whoops. Not that bad. I guess when you put it that way, that's not that bad, like, me hard. Yeah, yeah but bad. again, though, that it's like, this is just, you know, just watching him just fight right now. But yeah, it's just, like, incredibly boring, and you shouldn't have to... You cut yeah, out. you've but... completely cut out for that last little sentence there. It's completely boring, boring. and what? I said it's just ridiculous. Oh, okay. It. Yeah. Yeah, boring and ridiculous. This is like, you guys know the whole like rubber band joystick method? Yeah. Yeah, this is like that on steroids. Like, yeah. Good lord. Um, yeah, just go. Kind of little... makes me wish I had the thing to just, just press and hold down A, just put the sub tape over it, and just let it play overnight. Yeah. Mike, you, <laughs> need, to, you need to make like a Rube Goldburn machine or something to hit A for you every few minutes. You know? Yeah, well, again, we'll see, but yeah, there's like plenty of ways of just playing it, do whatever, but... I wonder if you have a pro controller, you could like remap it and then tape down a trigger or something. Mm. Oh, I mean, that's possible, but, huh. you know, a discussion for another time, maybe. Okay, and that's our article <laughs> on the site, how to hack Mortal Kombat 11, you know? Dude, there's been a Twitch, uh, Twitch streamer, uh, Maximilian, who is like a big, like, you know, fighting game guy. He's been like telling everyone like he's like, trying. Yeah, he's very Follow good. Okay. Um, uh, and if he's like trying to like help people like with the crying, he's like, all right, guys, let's let's test this out. So he's like, that's probably how Mike learned about this. But he's like testing like ways what to grind with like the easiest way to grind. Like we're trying to break stuff, man. Like if you put a good ways. Like us fighting game players, what we do is we break systems. Like that's how <laughs> fighting game yeah. players brains work. I mean. Like, yeah, and for anyone who hasn't followed him, uh, Miles923, Maximilian, he's like the one of the most premier like fighting game people, and it's like, his videos are always enjoyable. So if you have not subscribed to him, please do. He's like over a million subscribers, but he's like, he's so good at what he does, he should have like five million by now. Yeah, he's awesome. So he's a good man. I would be more than happy to shake his hand if I ever had the chance. Okay. Yeah, so if, if you're into fighting games, check him out. He's got tutorials and stuff. And, yeah. Um, so, cool. yeah, and if you're thinking about picking up MK11, I would, and you want to actually fight, you want to play the fighting game, don't, I wouldn't say don't let this deter you, because it, it yeah, no, the Mortal Kombat 11 is still a great fighting game, okay. and it still looks like one of the best games that we've ever had, but really? yeah, everything it, else outside of the fighting, though, is like, eesh. The tutorials and stuff in this game are fantastic. They'll teach you stuff that, you know, they'll use generic terms, like, that all fighting games use, like, Mix, you know, oh, they're going to teach you about mix-ups. They're going to teach you about frame data, even. They even go through, like, what plus on block means, what being negative on block means, um, and all this good stuff that, like, it, it, it's, like, a pretty decent, nice... So the tutorial's, like, if you go through the whole thing, it's probably, like, an hour, maybe two. Okay. Um, okay. So it's, it's a definitely lengthy tutorial, and if you're at all interested in, like, learning some of the nitty-gritty of fighting games, it does a really good job um, of, like, teaching it. So it's like you might have to play it a couple times because it just moves on after yeah. you do it correctly once, but um, it, it does a good job. So it's someone who's like n not really into the fighting game genre or wanted to get kind of into it. Is Mortal Kombat 11 yeah. a good pickup? Okay. I think it's a great, yeah, I think it's a great pickup. Like, okay. it, Either it, that or Killer Instinct. Yeah, Killer Instinct is really good too. That game's a little, that game's a little, it's a little old and it's got, you know, some little, some problems, but. What about Dead or Alive? Yeah. I, I, 
Get her alive. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna spend six. I'm talking about microtransactions. Well, I mean, if you really want to see how bad microtransactions can be, go buy up, go pick up Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive, though, is a great button mashy game. Yeah, super fun. Sounds like my cup of tea. Yeah, it's for a good it and no other reason. Uh, I don't know. I never play it. I, I, yeah, it's a good one for that. Mortal Kombat 11 is good. Play it if you or if you want to try it out. I, I'd suggest it. Um, if you're not that yeah, into you Final Fantasy, the red box maybe. Yeah, I think if you're not that into it, wait until it goes on sale. Pick it up, see if it's okay. you know, your thing. And um, but yeah, good one. But you know, Nether Realm though issues there. People who make it, they're you know going through some stuff. They're getting more flack because some people came out and talked about um, the grind that has been going on internally um, making these games and how they've just been burnt out. For so, crunch time. Uh, yeah, crunch is, a crunch is the killer, man. And uh, yes. uh, we always talk about games not, you know, it's not hard, it's not easy to make games, but no. 80, 80 to 100 hours was like a, a work week was like quoted. Um, yeah, third time. Yeah. Which is <sighs> yeah. And working, you know, working this weekends and just, it's crazy. I don't know. Maybe this is more cynical of me, but like, I'm never surprised when we hear about crunch time for any like somewhat big release anymore. You sure. know, it's mm -hmm. just like it's just kind of something I expect to have happened like during the development of the game. I'm not yeah. excusing it or anything, but I'm just saying it's just like it's no surprise that Mortal Kombat 11 would have had crunch time. You know. Well, the yeah. crunch time was being quoted to happen all the way back since uh, Mortal Kombat 9, essentially. That Mortal yeah. Kombat 9, MKX, and Justice yeah. 2. Oh, all okay. those games had their miscellaneous crunch times. And while the article didn't mention anything about Mortal Kombat 11 specifically, huh? you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, if someone had come out and said outright, yeah, Mortal Kombat 11, we had crunch time there too. I mean, mind yeah. you, if they did, then, you know, cool deal there. But that's still not a good excuse the crunch time for all the other games that came out for the past couple of years. Yeah. And yeah. It's like, hey, yeah. Go ahead. This, uh, sorry, this PC Gamer article broke it down, or was, was talking about it, um, and someone quoted out being paid like, basically $12 an hour with all the, you know, work they've been doing. If you, probably salary, Yeah, I was right? gonna say if you break it so down you, based on, like, what they made per year. When you, yeah. Which is, which is well below a lot of places of minimum wage. Probably make um, I more think, money being like a waiter at some places. Uh, I, I believe he's in Cal California recently. I thought that uh, I think the other realms in California. No, 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 they're in they're in Chicago. Excuse me. Um, I don't know what the minimum wage is in Chicago, but it's probably more than than that. Mm -hmm. That's not very high. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of isn't it's California sad. like isn't Didn't California eat. like um fifteen dollars now. Fifteen or sixteen, they recently oh, wow. raised it. Okay. Yeah. According to Google, apparently the minimum is like twelve or thirteen. Apparently, right now. So yeah, in, it's basically minimum wage in Chicago right now. Apparently. Okay. Which is, I mean, for someone making a gigantic game like, pretty ridiculous. It should probably be a bit more than just twelve dollars in this case, though. Well, okay. I mean, this is no. I mean, this is a little bit of a skewed statistic because I mean, these are all salaried positions for software development, right? Yeah. right? And yeah. So that's just how the breakdown happens. Um, I think yeah, because yeah. it's like so it's like the game industry is just the most high profile thing that we see have crunch time so to speak but it happens in mm. other fields as well it happens in software development a lot sure. also oh for oh, like, of course. More generic programs and everything I I think the only big issue it's like to be perfectly honest I think the only like the only time it's bad is when they're like contractually obligated to put in this time and mm. that's the problem but like if they're doing like what uh, Rockstar supposedly does and just like the people are there because they truly want to be there or whatever. Wow. Then it's like, yeah, then I think that's I mean, fine. You, but well, I don't know if they truly want to be there. Or kind of the thing of like, we have to be here, otherwise, of our job could just be not exist anymore. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, so like, you know, we have to make it. We have to make the effort of being here because if we do go home, like, what's stopping Rockstar, star, this gigantic company who could probably hire, and you know, get gets might replace me real quick. All right, that's they really point. wanted to. Yeah, no, and that's the biggest saddest irony of all this because it's like so many people are saying like, oh, they're not holding a gun to their heads; they're there by choice. And it's like, no, they don't have a choice because if they don't do the time, then the other people who are doing the time will have their jobs while they get replaced by other harder working people and it's like yeah you know it just sucks when you go to literally break it down and when you go ahead to literally see just how it plays out it's like 
Yeah, unions probably might be a thing sooner or later, or if this feel like... thing for crunch time keeps coming up. Oh, I feel like that yeah. could be a pretty decent wrongful termination lawsuit, though. It... I mean, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't they're know. Not... Like, well, they're not meeting their obligations, so if they're not doing what they're being asked to do, then mm. it's like, well, that's the well, thing. They would okay, be meeting. But... They would. It's like. The only obligations you have to a job or whatever is in your contract. And so it's like, unless the sure. contract specifies, you know, um, oh, yeah, it's like sometimes you will be asked to work, you know, 80 to 100 hour weeks, work weeks or whatever near the end of projects or what have you, right? And it's like with no additional compensation provided is the big kicker. Um, it's like, yeah, it's just like, um, unless that's in the, or something to that nature is in the contract, if that's not in there, but it's just like, and it's like, other people are working that amount of time and don't expect compensation for it, but there's nothing holding you to it, then that could very well be a uh, wrongful termination lawsuit. Some guys what about should do for that. ongoing games? Some guys should do that. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, mind you that the second time that I heard about the magical word, uh, magical term of crunch time was with Fortnite. And how we're, this isn't, you know, a game that's, you know, nearing the finish line, so to speak. But it's an ongoing game to where it's like, you know, they're constantly updating the week, if I heard correctly, weekly. Therefore, it's like, you know, they need to keep crunching out more and more content. So it's like, I mean, if it was like for with Anthem or Mortal Kombat 11 to where the, or not Mortal Kombat 11, since I don't know if that has been officially confirmed or not. But like, if a game is nearing the end of its completion, then yeah, crunch time is understandable. But for a game that's ongoing, like Fortnite, to be having their crunch time for something that's technically ongoing, then it's like, I... am you know, or just trying to figure out if that would be something that would also be in that contract too, for it's like, expect crunch time or 80 to 100 hour work weeks constantly, even after a game comes out. I don't know if people would be all too thrilled about that one or not. I think Fortnite's whole deal, because I saw that story too, I think this past week, where yeah. it's like, there's a really bad crunch issue at Epic. I think so much of that is like a lack of employees on the Fortnite team. It's like, to be honest. Really? Yeah, like, I'm the staff. Yeah, they said yeah. that they're hiring more people, of course. So, if, yeah. you know, if hiring more people helps to, you know, combat crunch time, <laughs> then, you know, and then, you know, all the more power to it. But until that time, though, a lot of people who have an extra friend with the game, you know, they're not going to hesitate to go to point that out and say, like, oh, you know, yeah. oh, epic, how dare you, yada, yada. I, and so I, honestly, I think that's unreasonable. It's like a weekly deployment schedule is hell. Okay, and I speak from somewhat personal experience there. Okay, and so it's just like, you know, it's basically, you pretty much, uh, it's like you pretty much Monday through, assume it's a five day work week, Monday through Thursday, you're developing whatever new crap has to go into the game. Friday, you're QA testing it. And then Friday, late Friday night, you're releasing it. Yeah. Like that's about, how, I don't know if, I don't think Fortnite exactly flows like that necessarily, right. but yeah, that's about how it goes, you know? So it's yeah. like, you know, yeah. it's like you're given like four days to actually only develop stuff before yeah. it goes into QA. So, so. all right. I mean, yeah, another another big studio crunch time. Not that it's surprising, but it sucks to hear about it. And like, there's also other things you heard about, like, in the, in the workforce from, from that article. Yeah. I feel like we need to move yeah. on. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, like, speaking out, of, man. yeah, my noob, he, he just got killed. So that's it. He only made two thirty-three fights before he met us, and F. and I think I got like ten thousand coins. I think I don't know how many, but I'll figure it out later. F. I can't. It can barely open you a chest. Okay, moving on. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, uh, no more. Yeah, no more. What's the deal with Persona Five? Okay, so for the deal with Persona Five, for those of you following the game, um, Persona Five has been kind of been building up to this big thing about this whatever P Five R was supposed to be. Okay. And then it eventually got to a point to where earlier this week we finally started to get news on what it was. So we got confirmation that this is Persona 5 Royal. So it's essentially the expansion of Persona 5 for the original game. It's going to be coming exclusively to PlayStation 4. It's going to be coming out on the 31st of October of this year. And then it's going to be coming stateside 2020. Oh, so wow. it's going okay. to have a brand new location. Or, I mean, sorry. Um, it's going to have a new uh, location to travel to, new activities. You're going to have a brand new character who's going to be joining you. Everyone thought that she was possibly going to be like a female protagonist of sorts, but she's just going to be a side character or another character who just joins your team. Isn't it Morgana? And... No, not Morgana. It's, okay. uh... It's like, didn't the name Morgana slips my human... mind. It's not Kasumi, I don't know it? if they did or not. I... Okay. 
Huh? Is it Or no, I... If that's her name, the red-headed girl with long hair... Unfortunately, like I said, it's slipping my mind right now, yeah. but... And um, the other thing also is that they said that there's going to be a third semester. So I think that this third semester, I think, falls in the uh, January to March time frame, I think. Okay. To which, if that's the case, then, you know, that means that... Or rather, I should say that I'm not to go to spoil the game. I'll do my best to not spoil, but the game kind of ends on Christmas in Persona 5. Okay. And, you know, it finishes up um, in February or March, but the game essentially comes to a close on Christmas. And if you play the game, you know what happens on Christmas, and it sucks. But the thing, though, is that if this is going to be going on to that, so to speak, then there's a very good possibility to where there may be a brand new ending, which, of course, there will be. That goes without saying. But the, you know, the way that this story ends is going to be rather drastically compared to how oh, it ended in the original game. So it's going to be something fun to look forward to, but again, the problem is that it's only going to be a PlayStation 4 exclusive, which leads us to what P5S was, okay. which honestly, because on the next day, we got what, or word of what P5S was. A lot of people thought it was going to be Persona 5 Switch. Reasonable. Because, yeah, Reasonable. S's for Switch. Yeah. And we are technically getting Persona 5 for Switch, Albeit that the S actually is for Scramble. So Persona 5 Scramble, there's something extra attached to that, but essentially it's going to be Persona Muso, Persona Warriors. So they the pretty much called a Hyrule Warriors, but for Persona. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Hyrule Warriors right. for Persona, and <laughs> a lot of people felt rather betrayed by this because it's like, Oof. no, you were supposed to bring Persona 5 to Switch! We didn't want this! And the thing, though, is that for myself, I'm a big Warriors fan myself, so I don't give a care <laughs> Okay. for a better way to put it. But no, I love Musou games, so I am all in for um, this coming, I mean, this coming soon, hopefully. There's no official confirmation, I don't think, for a West, I mean, a Western release, but I really hope it does have a Western release, because I love Musou games, and with Persona 5, it's going to be even better, so. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys played Persona 5 or not, but... Technically, I'm excited for Royal, and I'm also excited for Scramble, so we'll okay. see what happens there. Okay. I got it, I don't know, I got it when I first got my PS4, and I haven't touched it. Although I did watch like six episodes of the animation or so when that was airing, but then kind of dropped it also, and that follows the game, yeah. so to speak. But yeah, uh, I've been meaning to play it, but I've heard it's like a 90 hour or so experience, and it's like, if Royal is coming out, I'd rather just wait for that to play it at this point then. Yeah. Because... To, so well, to I mean, clarify, again, oh, sorry, Persona sorry. 5 Royal is going to be Persona 5 plus some, right? Okay. It's the golden, it's the it's like Persona game of the 3 year. extended. Okay, it's like yeah. game of the year edition, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Game of the year and then some. Yeah, okay, cool. Alright, so, you guys excited for this? <laughs> um, as long as Lubu's in it. Alright, fair enough. Anthony? Is there will be a Lubu-like <laughs> character. Every... Russo game has that Lubu character. So yeah, there I will be one of them. I just remember Lubu when I was a kid, just being so scared. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was so much fun. It's like, do not pursue Lubu. Well, gee, what's the worst that can happen? Two hits later. Well, that happened. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Alright. Is, is, An or Anthony, what do you think? Excited for any of this? I've never played any Persona games. Alright, you don't I... care about it. <laughs> I mean, I upgraded to an Xbox One. Um, I, I mean, it's not on PC. I might pick it up on Switch. I'm not a fan of Warriors games, to be honest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I probably won't. Yeah, I have no, I have no yeah. interest in Scramble, but maybe on Royal. Um. All right. Are do you think the outrage on it not being on Switch is justified? Because like I don't know, it's like yes. <laughs> I do. Well, I mean, well, if it was on Switch, Switch, if. Persona 5 is on Switch, I'd play it. Like, I don't particularly want a Warriors game. I want a proper Persona experience. Did Sony publish it? I don't... Yeah, that's the, the thing. It's like, this is... Yeah, it's right. at, developed by Atlas, published by Sony. So... Well, then, uh, I know, actually, that was, I People mean, thought that was gonna happen? Yeah, it was a yeah, very... Yeah, well, I mean, rumor. Joker's in Smash, so... <laughs> right, I mean, but Cloud Joint I mean, Smash, we got Final Fantasy VII on Switch. Sony Pers doesn't know. Uh, Persona oh, 5 or no, no, no. Joker in Smash, so why not Persona 5? That was the logic of what some people used to try to get to that point. I mean, if Kratos it's... was in Smash, we wouldn't expect to go to war. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are still holding out for Banjo-Kazooie, but... 
I mean, it's different though because Sony, like I said, Sony published the game, right? So like, they own publishing rights to it most likely, at least for a certain amount of time. Double check. I mean, I think, yeah. right? I mean, let me double check I'm, on. Uh, let's double check it. this yeah. here. Hold on. Fact yeah. checking, oh, man. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people, they just, hey, whenever whenever someone does not have their way, they're going to find something to complain about. Yeah. You know, like, oh, for the Persona okay. 5, uh, for the Persona 5, the new girl, a lot of people are, are like, pointing to what she's wearing, and it's like, that's not appropriate! She should wear pants! And it's like, you do realize that dancers and other people I can also I Are you talking about the Kasumi thigh too. thing? Is that what you're on about? Does a isn't it Kelly yeah. Tech Mai that published it? Oh, no. No, no, it's Atlas, Atlas published, published it. it. Okay, Atlas, Atlas yeah. published it. Okay, then. But it's like, you know, know, if people don't have their way, they're always going to find something to complain yeah. about. And, you know, in this case for, well, besides for what I just said about uh, the ladies attire, that, you know, for the Persona 5 not coming to Switch, you know, the moment that happened, it's like people were just out of woodworks, just trying to come up with ways to just hate on Persona 5. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, I've heard the, there's like some minor controversy about one of the girls' costumes. Or something. Oh, I it's, I yeah, it's just like they don't Did like. Shiny let that on the PS4. Well, no, yes. Here, I mean, they don't... mind you, I'll see if I can try to find her character attire really fast. Yeah, yeah they don't like Kasumi's thighs. That's a big thing that I've heard. It's like her outfit. Thighs her, are evil. Her, her outfit reveals her thighs, and it's like I don't even think that's the worst thing in that game. Like, yeah. I th it's like one of the first. Oh, there are so much worse than yeah, that's just what I'm, thighs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like I don't think that's the worst thing in that game. You know, it's just like what. <laughs> It's like, you got Anne's uh, Phantom Thief costume, or whatever you want to call it. It's like, that's heavily implied to be like a dominatrix sort of costume. And then, uh, let's see, there's like, from what I know from watching the animation, there's like alternate Anne, who's basically like a, uh, she's basically like a sex slave to this dude. You know? Okay. So it's and like, don't forget about the Persona this 5. This guy sounds awesome. <laughs> hey, it's ready then for mature. Well, I mean, mind you, besides all that, though, if you haven't yeah, played Persona yeah. 5, I, it would definitely be a recommendation. It's possibly one of the most stylish games that have <laughs> ever come out. So if you want to have a good time and if you want to, you know, have a game that you play, you know, progress through slowly but surely, Persona 5 is a really good game, so I would still recommend it. But yeah, all the hate that Persona, playing that Persona 5 is getting is just kind of ridiculous, just because, like, it's not coming to Switch anymore, and oh, look at well, how she I mean, it's and anymore so was so not, I wouldn't say anymore because it was never coming in the first place, but Well yeah, but some people were just under the belief that that was gonna happen, even though no one said anything about that specifically. Yeah, I mean who knows, maybe it'll come in the future, but I mean plenty of well, honestly, come out? Twenty yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, but um September that was gonna lead into what I was also gonna say as well, because part of me thinks that, you know, it's not confirmed right now, but like, say for example, what if we find out at E3 that we're, and that the Switch may get like Persona 3 or 4, I, or maybe even a confirmation on 5 at a later time, who knows, but, you know, it would be pretty awesome to consider like, you know, what, I mean, the older Persona titles coming to Switch. I might actually put that down as one of my predictions at E3. Probably not going to happen, but it will still be a fun guess. Okay. Uh, so it's like Atlas. Decently huge, right? So they're a pretty big Japanese game development company. Uh, well, they're they're like, publisher. Oh, the publisher. Oh, Sega helps them out, so yeah. Rather. I'd say it's like, this is kind of a stopgap for Atlas, uh, Persona 5 Royal, that is. Because, like, we've, uh, yeah. so it's like, we've, what's it called? Oh, yeah, we covered this on the show, uh, a, few, a number, maybe a <laughs> few months ago at this point. It's like, Atlas basically, like, was polling their fan base as to what they want to see next. So it's yeah. like, arguably based on the results of that, that is what they shifted a lot of development towards working on. So I think it's like this is a stopgap. So I think maybe just because they might not have anything lined up for a little while. So that's right. Uh, and like it's coming to the same platform as already on. Yeah. Like there's going to be a lot. There's work putting into it, but they don't have to change like anything drastically. Like right. well, the game is, well, game's kind of old, right? The game's kind of well, old. No, the game's old, don't get me wrong, but the other thing else is that Royal is also getting a graphic update too, so it's oh, going to look nice. much better than it did with Persona 5, because Persona 5 was for PlayStation 3 alongside with PlayStation 4, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're going to pull out all the stops for Royal when it comes out later this year in Japan. Alright, okay, that's cool. Because I was going to say, like, it's not like, a game's old and, like, it was released before the Switch came out, right? So it's not like... They were... Yeah, but then that was why a lot of people thought we were going to get Persona 5 on Switch. But, you know, in that regard, though, why get it on Switch for this 
you know, outdated version if you can get Wario not so much sooner after that. Or later after that, who knows. Okay. Alright, so, I don't know, one little tidbit okay, to add fun to little tidbit. Yeah, one little tidbit to add to this is uh, on Android, it's like one of the most popular apps is Persona 5 IM, which all it does is just like, it's a messaging app that's styled in the way they have it in the game. So, I don't know. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Okay. Yeah. All right, Anthony, Epic wants to bargain with the devil. So oh, yeah. It. Apparently, yes. You yeah. cannot bargain with Gabe. What will people learn? Uh, so we have, there was a tweet that went out on Twitter a while, uh, a couple of days back. Um, there was like a, a thread that was going around with people uh, responding to, uh, what's his name? Tim Sweeney is the CEO of Epic, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, responded, he would just posted something on Twitter and then there was a lot of debate going backwards and forwards and whatnot. Uh, bear in mind that tweet has been deleted, funnily enough. Um, I haven't been able to find it, however it is in this article. Uh, I'll just read from this article a bit. Um, Tim so... is the CEO of Epic, by the way. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I did say that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so basically, what's happened is... Um, the news comes from a tweet thread where Sweeney discussed deals and the future of Epic of the Epic Game Store. One question posed: Are you saying that if Valve decided to reduce its revenue share to twelve percent or even ten percent, that you would immediately stop doing exclusives? So that was someone who asked that question. After a few more back and forths, Sweeney confirmed: If Steam committed to a permanent eighty-eight percent revenue share for all developers and publishers without major strings attached. <laughs> Epic would hastily organize a retreat from exclusives while honoring our partner commitments and consider putting our own games on Steam. He followed that with another tweet stating such a move would be a glorious moment in the history of PC gaming. Now, this is kind of smallish news. Now, I have a couple of things to add to this. First up, Epic does no support whatsoever for any of their games that are on the platform. They rely on the developers or publishers to deal with all that stuff. So if there is an issue with the get with the key being redeemed on Epic, you have to contact the developer about it. Uh, not actual Epic itself. They also offer no forums, nothing like that at all. Um, so seem to take a massive, massive pay cut in the sense of and drop it back to 12% would be absolutely insane. It wouldn't never happen in my opinion, because they need that money to kind of support the platform and to keep the forums open and to keep it all moderated and offer support and all that kind of stuff. They might be able to take a, take a bit of a pay cut, like back to say 30% or something like that, perhaps, but there's no way this is going to happen. Taylor, you've <laughs> probably got something to say on this. Uh, just trying to more to the point, right? Where it's like, it's the point that I've brought up many, many times concerning like Epic's cut and everything versus Steam's cut and everything. It's just like, all right, yes, Steam is an immensely profitable platform for Valve. I'm not denying that. The split, yeah. off the top of my head, the split is like 70-30. Oh my god, hi, Jamin. How are you? The split is like... Uh, oh, seven... very well. Thank you for asking, Tyler. This, Taylor. The split is like, the split is like 70-30, <laughs> with 70% of the profits going to uh, the developer, 30% going on to... 30% um, going back to Valve there. Uh, yeah. And it's just like, not all of... It's not like a 30% profit margin, right? It's like Steam is so much larger of a platform than Epic is. You know, it's like, mm. as you mentioned, they have to support infrastructure and features like support, forums, the customer service, etc., etc. Yeah. It's like Steam is a much bigger machine and takes a lot more money to operate just on a base level than Epic Game Store does. And I mean... Mm. You fair also, Valve dumps a lot of the money they made from Steam into R&D. Like... I don't think it's fair to call Valve don't a game it. development company anymore. They're more like an R&D company at this point, you know? And I mean, when was the last time you heard about Steam servers going down, right? You know, it's just like, they're literally, it's like they, they were literally innovating in the world of data delivery. That's the thing. So it's like, you know, they are r and so much content delivery stuff that it's just, it's insane how much they do. And so it's like, to me... If you want your game on the largest platform and the most reliable platform that'll get seen by the most PC gamers and everything, then you should probably go on to Steam, you know? Steam. Yeah. However, the issue is that a lot of games like Borderlands 3 and whatnot are heading over to Epic. Unfortunately, uh, there was another article going around where <coughs> Epic is 
I didn't fully read it, so I may be incorrect, but Epic is basically paying them to right. put their game on their system. Yeah, I mean... And that's another thing so I wanted to... Like, you know, yeah. like a PlayStation Plus type thing. Mm. And I mean, that's another thing I wanted to bring up, too, is just, like, I'd be okay with... Uh, or it's like, I'd be more okay with games being exclusive on Epic had... Um, had Epic not lobbied for it. Like, if it was just a thing that organically happened, then, yeah, yeah, it'd be fine, you know? But it's just like, you know, this is like, Epic is paying boatloads of cash for exclusivity deals to get, yeah. to get more and more people to use their own platform, which, I don't know, actively in business-like is fine, I suppose. I mean, there's nothing too, too bad about that, you know? I just, I mean, lobbying happens in almost every industry, right? So it's like, there's nothing too, too bad about that, but it's just... I think it's a dirty practice, to be honest. Like okay. a lot of a lot of companies might not do it. Yeah, sure. But I think it's like a platform like Epic competing, like a platform with Epic competing with Steam. They're two completely different things. Like they, in a sense, they're not really comparable. All they really do is publish games on a platform. That's kind of the only thing that you can really compare with. So for Steam to go out and pay people to put games on their platform, I like they're never going to compete. With yeah. Epic in a sense, it's it's unfair. But then business is not fair, and you know that's sure that's all fair, and you know. So, I mean, I, I don't think this is any different. Sony, you know, they're they're putting money to a certain company to put their game out exclusively on their console rather than Xbox. It's the same thing. Epic's just paying. You know, you got to yeah, remember they're paying. Yeah. They're paying that that developer, right? Um, yeah. Or that or then that publisher. Um, and that money goes toward making the game, you know, that, that's, or hopefully, right, you know, that's hopefully where that money is going to help create the game and, and make it the best game possible. Mm -hmm. So they put it on their their system and because they invested that money into that company, they're looking for the return on their investment. I and mean, that's all a it is, lot right? Of, a lot of times they give them the money after the fact, like, after it's... Uh, yeah, see, that's something I, I don't... That might be different. That's like probably on a per sale basis, right? Like, hey, we'll we'll give you a, we'll give you. A, it depends on the contract. You yeah. Know, hey, we'll, yeah. you're exclusively on our our platform. We'll give you a more bigger cut. Yeah. And that that cut is worth it to the developer or publisher. Then, that then, then yeah, why wouldn't they do it? I think so. yeah, I think it's like the big decision that it comes down to for most publishers is does the la or does the comparative lack of a user base. It's like, does the comparative drop in volume of sales get made up for by the percentage of cut that Epic offers? Mm -hmm. I think that's the big, like, that's the big decision that publishers have to contend with. And I think that's all it really comes down to. And, well, in, in cases like Borderlands 3, you know, I, I think the main place people are going to play those are on console. People are going to play those games on console. Yeah. That's, the, that's where they're going to sell the most. Yeah. Now, you know, a year later, I think, is when the exclusivity drops from the Epic, right? Uh-huh. All the mods, all the mods are going to be there. Then that's when they're going to get more, uh, you know, a little bit more sales boost on PC. Yeah, like that's it's. it's, it's I think they're smart in how they're doing it. <laughs> I think they know the console market and they know the PC market and uh, mm. plan accordingly to, you know, what they think will work. So yeah. Whether it works or not, we'll see. I guess, but and just like um, FPSs are a super hard sell on PC, except for Counter Strike and uh, Battlefield. So, yeah, if you're yeah. not like a if you're not like a competitive shooter, like yeah. a lot of times people don't even like it's mostly con even Call of Duty is like a, a console shooter. Yeah, this so is I like mean... Call of Duty dies on PC within the first month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. First person shooters are a weird a weird thing on on PC. People love them, but then it's like you know it's people are always oh PC or keyboard and mouse, but then the the databases are so much smaller. Right. Or the yeah. player bases are so much smaller. Yeah, so it's like unless... Even, yeah. Yeah, so it's like pretty much just like Counter-Strike is the only like really long-running, consistent PC FPS, you know? Battlefield mm -hmm. 4 still goes really strong on PC, I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Like, I could pop in and find a game in Battlefield 4 like right now and be fine. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that game is six years old this year, so... Yeah. yeah. But... Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's like, I'd have, a, I'd have an easier time finding a game in Battlefield 4 on PC than I would Battlefield 5. Or yeah, I saw Battlefield Five servers are pretty yeah lacking right now. Yeah, so I'd, I'd probably I find guess... Battlefield Three easier than Battlefield Five on PC. Anyway, yeah, probably even two. One question <laughs> I kind of have is: Could this? I mean, everybody says you know, 
could Steam die and this and that and blah blah blah. But could this be like a polar shift in a sense where like all like smaller publishing like um, not publishers but like smaller storefronts like Epic or whatever mm. are paying big developers and you know small developers as well and giving them more money in a sense or taking less money. Could this be kind of a polar shift? kind of steam turning into epic in a sense like the way it was where quite a, like less stuff was being published on it compared to sure based, other... excuse me uh based on valve's past statements i don't think valve would ever start lobbying for exclusive on their platform that's the thing mm-hmm. if any i think the worst thing that would happen is say it's like valve maintains the status quo as it is right now then it's like i'd say the shift we would see would that steam would primarily have like more diverse quantity of indie games sort of thing or it's like smaller publisher <laughs> games just because at least as the user bases stand right now and will continue to stand for a long while it's just like if you're a smaller publisher you're gonna want as much exposure as possible right if you're a smaller developer so it's like steam is definitely the platform to go to but if you're a triple a developer people know your name like people know gearbots and 2k and borderlands and everything yeah. right so it's like it it's like you're gonna go whatever maximizes your profit and in that case it'll be epic probably um Really quick, you, you mentioned like Steam doesn't do exclusive, but didn't they do? They probably did some exclusives for like VR. Like there's VR oh, exclusives. Okay, and stuff so, like that. so I mean, okay, that might be a misstatement there. So it's like there are exclusives to Steam, but mm-hmm. Steam doesn't lobby for it. That's the difference. Okay, that's the point. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Just clarify. No, no, I was just curious yeah. myself. Like, okay, okay. Uh, Mike, what do you think? You've been quiet so far. Well, I mean, I've just been quietly listening in on it. And, you know, while I am kind of like in that position of the, you know, whatever and what have you, because I will admit that I did go ahead to recently finally look into getting the Epic Store just because they had Transistor on there for free. And it's like, I'm sorry, I like super giant games and I can't help myself. Yeah, but, but, you, you know, with that said... By buying it on Steam. <laughs> I mean, they'd probably get a cut of each download too. Yeah, probably. Hey, in no fairness, I bought I bought Bastion twice, and I got Transistor, and that was actually the only reason why I got PlayStation Four at that time. Okay. So as far as I see, I do support Super Giant well enough. So, All right, fair enough. Or at fair least I like to think that I do. I hope. But okay. you know, besides that, though, it's like as wishful thinking as this is <laughs> about how you know they're gonna do this. You know, there is so much miscellaneous what have yous about this that's like. We can't really tell if this is actually going to go down like such right now because of this. It's like, you know, it's a tactic by Epic, essentially. It's like, you know, if they and if Steam doesn't do it, then, oh, Steam's going to look bad in the long run. And if Steam does do it for whatever reason, then it's like, okay, well, what's the payoff there then? And yeah. it's like, hmm. Who knows? And honestly, you know, that was the whole reason why that I pulled up the game face on my phone. Because I could imagine, like, Gabe looking at this proposition and just having this face and say, No. They're actually serious about this, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, no. And honestly, it does seem like, like what you said earlier, that at this point it's going to be, like, whatever could be the most exposure Yeah. at this point. And, well, at the same time that I'm sure that for some uh, groups that, you know, if they go ahead and want more profit, then maybe they will go to Epic. But, you know, Steam, for as much as I may not look towards it in a positive light. But, again, once again, just learning the P- and the ways of the PC Master Race. So if I don't fully understand everything, don't send your waves of whatever you guys send off to haters. But I don't know what that is. But, you know, please be fair and kind and mercy. But um, outside of that, though, yeah, I kind of lost where I was going with that. But, um, no, um, what I was going to say, though, was, in the end, it's kind of hard to say how things going to play out, because up to this point, it's always been Steam. But now, with Epic being here, who knows how much that's going to influence things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it does seem like with each time that we go ahead and explore this, of uh, the Steam versus Epic, it's starting to be like, you know, it's now starting to become the PC console wars now, in some regards, and... Honestly, I'm kind of in hopes that it doesn't spiral as bad as it has on the console side things. Wishful Man, thinking, no. but I kind of have my doubts. But who knows how that's going to play out. Be interesting if kind of um, like uh, stores and whatnot ended up ended up on consoles, like Epic Store on you know PS4 and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean we'll see, but I'm not holding my breath on it. 
Mm. Yeah, it probably might happen. A couple last, like, closing things, because, I don't know, I'd still like to say I'm kind of in tune with the PC community still quite a bit. It's just like, we're definitely a lot less, I don't know, the PCMR mantra is definitely a lot less devout towards Valve after uh, the Skyrim paid mod scandal. So that's one sure, point yeah. to consider. And then also it's just like, I've heard, I have heard a lot of people in the community compare it to like a PC Civil War starting to go on now, this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So especially as it grows, the rain's going. So that's, that's about where things stand. I don't know. It's like, I don't feel... So I know I've been outspoken against, uh, you know, the Epic Game Store in the past, just based on, um, you know, it's like some preconceived misnotions, which I've clarified and say it's like, hey, you know, it's not Chinese spyware, but I guess I just don't feel super compelled to play any game on the Epic platform, sure. like Metro yeah. Exodus. I would have liked to play it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to play it now. You know, it's not worth it to me. And it's like, uh, same with Borderlands 3. I'm not a massive fan of Borderlands 3. So, not a massive fan of Borderlands. Yeah. So that's kind of... And the whole thing about, like... Oh gee, it's too difficult to download another store and open one application like that's yep. to me that's just a bit of a stupid argument. Okay. I mean um, okay, yeah. to clarify that's not necessarily the argument I'm making, but it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just like, yeah. you know, some of so much of it goes into like convenience for me and everything, so it's like I don't feel the need to install like a whole new launcher just to And another fact is like if you if you buy a code from like G2A or Humble Bundle or something. Yeah. And you like um, install, uh, like add it to the Epic Game Store, and it doesn't work. For me, that's that's not a massive game changer. But like, I don't want to be emailing the developer and saying, "Hey, your code doesn't work." I want to just be able to, you know, click a thing and go, "Hey, what's going on?" Sure. Kind of thing. It's just it's it's an inconvenience. I think they really need, and any store really, they really need to add in like forums or something where you can contact them in some sense and say, "Hey, what's going on?" So even if that means a bigger pay cut for them, like fifteen percent, fifteen percent instead of ten percent or whatever, then I think that's what they really need to do. Yeah, fair enough. All right. I think you know PC has become more popular in the household. Like you know, not saying they're not popular, but oh yeah, it's like it's, you know, it's cheaper sure. yeah. to get you know these these uh, equipment to play games yeah. on, and yeah, you know, games are getting bigger. You know, we might see who knows. Well, maybe we could see another store opening up. I don't think. I think this is probably the way it's going to be. That there's going to be more competitors on PC. Okay. Uh, well, this is the opening chapter, so we'll see how it plays out from here going forward. Exactly. And the whole like PC slash console thing, like what Madbox is doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that Madbox console. Oh man, that's insane. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I don't even know that exists anymore. Yeah. I think it still does. Like, <laughs> something on it a while back. But, you know, we'll see. Okay. Twenty years later. <laughs> yeah. I will say this is like, I don't know, how many weeks in a row does it feel like we've talked about like Epic in their store and everything? It's Almost like, as many as Anthem. Yeah, it's like they're yeah. baiting a lot of free advertising off of like yeah. media outlets. Yeah, yeah. Because like, I guarantee they're like, always in the yeah, always, always in the media. News. And I mean, even bad press is still press, right? So yeah. and it's an ongoing yeah. topic as well, yeah. whether it's good or bad. So yeah. All right, so uh, as. You know, some of us are still on the Sephiroth train. Uh, from Software on like April 23rd, uh, or whatever Tuesday or Monday would have been, uh, released Sephiroth version 1.0.3. And mostly, it's mostly bug fixes, mostly some exploit fixes. So it's like, for example, on the Corrupted Muck Monk Phantom Boss, there's a way you could spam uh, Snap Seeds and Firecrackers and basically just stun lot the boss for the duration of the fight. They fit like little like buds like that and everything, just so people actually have to fight the boss. And um, and so, yeah. But and most of the changes are either bud fixes or spirit emblem cost reductions for certain skills that weren't getting as much use. So it's like certain skews of like the ads prosthetic tool required like three spirit emblems to use. And people didn't use it because you know the cost is just by the memes, and you're given a finite amount of these things for fight or whatever you know so mm, yeah but the biggest thing and we all remember the whole like calls for Sekiro to have an easy mode right the biggest thing yeah. is that from software actually nerfed a boss mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. yeah so the blazing bull which is like the second or third real boss in the sense of it drops a memory um yeah yeah it's like and depending on who you're playing it's like the second or third real boss they reduced his uh they reduced his health and posture. Yep. Yeah. So. I mean. 
That's a pretty easy boss, isn't it? Like, it's I'm, not hard. Yeah, it's like I don't. Out of in the all, spectrum of like a hard bosses in that game, that is not one that comes to mind. Right. It's like I yeah, mean, that's kind of my thoughts around it too. It's like out of all the bosses to nerf, this one got it. It was just like I don't know. I beat it first try, first playthrough. So you could argue that it took too long to kill that boss, and that boss wasn't necessarily fun because it took a while. Okay. But. I mean, maybe that's why they just <laughs> looked at it and were like, no, this kind of takes too long. Yeah. And we didn't mean for this boss to just, you know, because you, you can't, you can't like parry that boss. It's all about running around it because it's a yeah, gigantic exactly. bull. Um, so like, it's all about moving, movement. So like, you're running around constantly and, and if you don't get lucky sometimes, that, that boss fight can take a while. Yeah. And like, from software, whenever they do like beasts or like larger than humanoid creatures for bosses, you kind of run into yeah. the uh, problematic hitbox issue on some of them. Yeah. The Blazing Bowl was good for the most part. Not initially. I'd say the change order is a lot worse. Um, but yeah. But maybe it could be, maybe the perceived difficulty is how people, or it's like when people fight the boss is the problem. Because at least on my first playthrough, I did uh, the very first like actual boss I fought was Lady Butterfly. Same. So, yeah, and so it was just yeah, like, so like, yeah, you have to fight Lady Butterfly and then Gyobu, and then yeah. it's like before the bowl, and it's just like, past that point, you're given two memories, and you probably have a decent stack of prayer beads at that point, so it's like, I don't know, the Blazing Bowl kind of seemed easier to me, but then I imagine if that was maybe the second boss you were to fight, then it could be difficult, mm -hmm. but yeah. It's just different, it's just a different, you know, you're not used to that type, I don't know, yeah. mm, it's interesting. Okay. Do you think um, it's like from software becoming soft as some people have said? <laughs> you know? I don't know. I think they want to make a What's up? I think they want to make an appealing game, right? So yeah. like mm -hmm. if you have a game comes out the bat and it's supposed to be hard, if it smacks you in the mouth so hard that you're like, well, dude, what? This isn't fun. Like, you know. I a Dark Soul 3. Oh my god. A lot of games yeah, that they that make, right? Yeah. Mortal Kombat 11? <laughs> I mean, that game can get hard if you want it to be hard. It's yeah. Hey, during um, this entire time, you'll run into plenty of fun challenges there. Okay. Whether if you want it or not. Okay. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, it happened to me a little bit in, like, Bloodborne, where I, like, got to a part where, you know, I was like, this isn't really fun. I'm just going to stop playing after, I don't know, six hours. <laughs> um, You know? So, yeah. I, could see, I could see that being the, the right. you know, like, yeah. Cause you, and especially because of the way they put bosses in that game. It's like, boss. Minutes later, next boss. So like some people just ask for it. it there at times are like you could fight like like in that moment like you literally fight the blazing bull like what like minute like within an area an hour. like yeah, yeah it's so like, it's like you so it's like you beat in Sekiro you beat Yobo is the dude on the horse yeah. and if you're in playing in English that voice actor deserves an award for that line delivery. I need to watch that maybe okay it, it's really good I recommend yeah. you check out the English voice actor for Giobu and then it's like there's an area with fodder enemies and yeah, then you fight the quick. blazing bull yeah. yeah there's like a short little stairway area and then it's like you're onto mm -hmm. the bull so yep so uh -huh. I do remember now yeah. and then it's like no. the same between uh Juzu the drunkard who's the Drunkard boss right. at uh, Harada Estate, and then before Lady Butterfly, because like there's only yeah. there's really only one enemy between, and that's the dude that comes at the end of the hallway that's like you just kill yeah, every just, time yeah. on your way to Lady Butterfly. Poor guy. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Huh. I don't know. There's also I'm glad they are improved. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, making those uh those combat arts a little you know better to use because. I have like that thing where you like slash yourself and you get more emblem stuff. Oh, okay. That's helpful. I'll do that before I know I'm gonna fight like a boss or something. But like at the same time, like you get you get like you get you use up your L and it's kind of a bummer when you're like, oh, I'm out of emblems now because they're uh, what are they? They're consumable. Like you yeah. Gain yeah. them, you know, yeah. right away. So I'm glad they are making some changes just to uh, uh, you know deal with it. Although they did reduce the the thing of like one of the best things in the game, which is kind of a bummer. The like the, the, the Senpu leaping the monk stuff. Oh yeah. They kind of uh, they said it was causing more damage than it, oh. which is like kind of a bummer because that's a good one. But I, didn't, I actually didn't use it. The only like one's good. Okay, yeah. the only two combat arts I used were the whirlwind and the Ichimon. <laughs> So. Oh, okay, see, I like the Mortal Draw a lot, so okay. I'm glad that it 
doing that and uh yeah i don't know it's cool i'm glad they're made they're in our you know and like like you know bigger stuff like you know they're lowering the price of information sold to the one of the characters and yeah the, informa the information is useless honestly ultimately yeah so like yeah so like when you spend uh you know 500 of their your money early on in the game like it seems like a lot you got scammed and he just says and he just says something off the cuff like i already did <coughs> right like, okay well you can you can take these two things that are worth like you know yeah 20 20 coins or whatever it's yeah you like, got scammed pretty oh. hard there yeah kind of yeah so i'm glad they are they are doing that stuff yeah. um and like you know, making bug fixes, which is nice. Like I guess the ogre inside the castle wasn't red eyed, although he I think he had. I thought he was. Like, I could have sworn he was. I fought him, and I think I did the the red eyed trick, and it worked. Like, yeah, it, it, at least visually he was. I could have sworn, but whatever. Um, uh, maybe I don't remember. Okay. Uh, he wasn't hard. Okay. So. Anyway, uh, Anthony. The Mike, more I hear about this, I want to play it. So, Dude, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. I'll play it sooner or later, but yeah, I'm still tuned in to by it. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think that's about it. So Anthony, what games are releasing this next week? <sighs> well, funnily enough, I completely forgot to do this, so I uh, oh, okay. I just did them like ah, uh, oh, <laughs> damn it. <No. laughs> so for April, yeah. <laughs> don't want to hear my voice. It's okay, Matt. Uh, so Matt's for... not here to interrupt you. Well, you're doing enough for that. <laughs> Uh, so for April 29th, sorry, for us, Ord Howe is coming to PC. Tales of the Neon Sea is also going to PC on April 30th. Uh, Geiger Wrecker Alt, whatever the heck that is, uh, is going to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on April 30th and May the 2nd. Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, is going to Xbox One and Switch on April 30th as well. Fade to Silence is coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox One on April the 30th. Starlink Battle for Atlas is coming to PC on April the 30th. Uh, quick recommendation here, do not buy it. I do not <laughs> it. Sorry, Andrew, you gave me code, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit weird. You know? Yeah, dude, it's, that's how it works, man. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, for games some reason there's a couple of games here that don't have release dates which are also coming out in April but not much time Something like the next five days or so yeah yeah uh, so Sigil is going to PC Levelhead is going to Steam Early Access uh, which is obviously PC Super Crate Boy is going to Switch hmm. I think that's already out at the moment actually uh, Golem Gates is going to PS4 Xbox One and Switch and Pixel Noir is going to Steam Early Access uh, obviously for PC as well for May the 1st, we have Precipice, which is going to PC. Tabletop Racing World Tour Nitro Edition is going to switch on May the 1st. Close to the Sun is going to PC on May the 2nd. Strike Suit Zero is going to switch on May the 2nd. Black Paradox Official Launch is going to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on May the 2nd as well. VA11 Hall A, that is. A is going to PS4 and Switch on May the 2nd. VA11 Hall A. Okay. Uh, the Swords of Ditto, Mormo's Curse is going to switch on May the 2nd. For Honor, Year 3, Season 2, Sakura is going to PC, PS4, Xbox One on May the 2nd as well. And Rise of Industry is going to PC on May the 2nd. And one other quick note, not that we really do deals, but Capcom is having a publisher sale on Steam at the moment. I just saw it, so go on and check out whatever you want to check out there. Awesome. Uh I'll add that PS the PSN is having a big Golden Week sale as well. Ooh. Tons of oh. stuff, uh, like a lot of Japanese-based uh, games. So. Have you guys nice. seen the limited edition Sephiro PS4? That thing looks so cool. I have not. Okay, go go figure it out. Go type it in. <laughs> Doing it. Let's see. It, it. it looks super neat. I really like it. Oh wait, I might have missed it. Not the one that looks like a wooden thing, is it? Yeah, it is. Ooh. Oh, really? oh yeah. that's nice. That looks delightful. Is that real? Yeah, it's real. It's like, they're, it's such an exclusive run of it, though. They're really only giving it away in, like, special promotions or contests. Oh, uh, I see. So you yeah, can't go out is... and buy it, which kind of sucks, but, yeah. That's, that is cool looking. That oh. looks nice. Yeah. Oh, it's super ugly, like, to have in my, like... <laughs> 
I think it God. depends on like your family room decor, though. You know. It, like... I mean, I don't think anywhere with like a box of blood on it, it's gonna really fit in anywhere. <laughs> I don't know, bro. But... It's like, hey, I don't know what you're doing in your living room. Nothing bad. <sighs> okay, yeah. so Andrew, where can people find you on Twitter? Ah, oh, you can find me at Duronsky, D R N S K I. Um, you know, you can shoot me about video games, <laughs> anything you'd like. I'll oh, probably respond. Homebrew, homebrew, home homebrewing, mixed martial arts, uh-huh. Clippers. Even oh. though I just lost. Um, F. Anything you can make, man. Yeah. F. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Anthony, where can good people find you on Twitter? Uh, I am at same Antman nineteen. I do post. I mainly do the site social media. Which right. I haven't really done this week. Had a pretty bad week, um, but aside from that, you can't find me anywhere. Don't even try. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Mike, how about yourself? I'm at MESA705. I don't really use Twitter that much, but hey, if you hit me up, maybe I'll go ahead to start coming up with something. All right, awesome. And find cool. me at INFERIUSELLECON, as well as Round Culture Gaming itself. All right, so. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you guys next week. Same time, same place.